Has everyone arrived? Everyone is already waiting inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's join them! Please, wait a moment. Before attending the meeting, I hope you can promise me one thing. What do you need? Promise me that you won't commit to anything too reckless. Hmm, what do you think? Okay. Everyone's here so early! But why isn't anybody talking? We already discussed things a bit. Hey, where have you been? I've missed you two. Are you ready? Very well. Are you sure this is gonna work? I gotta admit, it's bold. Color me impressed. Hmm. It's worth a try. The point of discussion is to arrive at a solution. Let's cut the small talk and move to the next point. Uh, you're making Paimon nervous. You're finally done. I have some other stuff to take care of. Catch you all later. Come on, don't give me that face. I know what you're going to say. I'll be careful. That's what I wanted to hear. Take care. Well, Traveler, Paimon, judging from your expressions, the meeting must have been quite productive. You can tell? I'm not that good at scheming a strategy, but I can sense people's emotions. And based on your reaction, things must have gone quite well. Uh, Paimon's a little worried. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. To be honest, I feel the same. But you're already some of the most capable people I know. So you have my trust. Your deeds speak for themselves. Candice, we stayed behind to tell you that, although you won't be coming with us, we'll be sure to remember your words. I'm very glad to hear that. I've said the same thing to everyone here today as I said to you when you arrived. Your safety is the most important thing. Only when you're safe can the plan be successful. So please, take care. You're welcome. And thank you for taking my advice. Good luck. With everything. I'll be here in the village praying for you. Hmm, sounds good. I'll go make some preparations. Okay. I'll hit them! Have you finished saying your goodbyes? Yeah! Also, Candace told everyone to be careful. Yes, she did. But I think my point also bears repeating. Our plan is not child's play. We won't be able to achieve anything if we're simply careful. We must go beyond that and fully commit ourselves to it. I hope this is clear to you. Huh? Shouldn't you be saying something more cheerful to boost our morale right now? Didn't we already do that during the meeting? You can never have enough words of encouragement. In that case, Candace can cuddle you to your heart's content while I continue to remind you of the seriousness of our situation. We all have our jobs to do, after all. It's like how some people can be put in charge of logistics, while others will fight on the front lines. Hmm... Speaking of the front lines, you don't look anything like a soldier. Of course. Compared to the mercenaries, I'm merely a feeble scholar. But the advantage of not being a mercenary is that I get to stay in a safer place and offer my strategic insight. Just think about that mercenary who lost his mind. 
Mercenary groups are facing constant danger every single day. Well, being a scholar is also a high-risk occupation, and you are a scholar! I'm not like the rest of them. Even among members of the same species, some will exhibit far more potential than others. This guy... Huh. Paimon still remembers when those mercenaries in Port Ormos called you a lunatic! <laughs> All intellectuals are lunatics in the eyes of fools. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm... That reminds me... Do you remember the record we saw in the King Deshret ruins? It mentioned forbidden knowledge. You have a good memory. Forbidden knowledge has the power to drive people insane, but this fact has never been shared with the public. Even I, who has worked in the academia for some time, was never once informed of this. I think... Those mad scholars and mercenaries we encountered may have all fallen victim to the corrupting qualities of forbidden knowledge. But the academia has always held a different view. They have always believed that symptoms of madness are a side effect of human contact with divine knowledge as mere mortals. Come to think of it, perhaps the academia has also never understood the true nature of forbidden knowledge and thus always approached the issue from the wrong direction. The Withering, Elazar, and the Sandstorms. Don't you think what is happening right now across Sumeru is rather similar to the forbidden knowledge pollution that occurred in the desert thousands of years ago? But Paimon thought that Soul's disease is what caused the withering in the sandstorms. At least, that's what Tainari told us. Wait a second. Could it be that... Ah, you've connected the dots. The cause of Soul's illness may precisely be the pollution from forbidden knowledge. But if that's the case, what should we do? This is huge! Wait. Why do you think Lesser Lord Kusanali would have a solution to this situation? You mean, it's related to the scene you saw when you passed out in the Avidia Forest? That whole, the world forget me thing? Hmm... In that case, it's imperative that we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Only by working with her to save Erminsoul can we completely resolve the problem Sumeru currently faces. To make sure we're still on track, I would like to check on the state of some of our preparatory work. Where are we going? To an Aramite base. Ah, they're here. Huh? What are they doing here? I gave them some... technical work to do. Ah, it's the scribe! And is that the traveler I see? How's the work going? Ah, yes! We have fixed the devices according to your instructions. One of them is already ready for use, while the others are still under repair. Aren't those devices for can knowledge extraction? What are you doing with those? Look here. Huh? Uh, more can knowledge? Are you going to put more weird stuff into his head again? What's that look on your face? Are you scared? Paimon's a little scared, but very, very furious! Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting response. Anyway, we're not going to use this just yet. As I mentioned during the meeting, this knowledge capsule contains a decree I drew up in the past. The Academia should also have their own copy. And according to the plan we just came up with... Traveler, I want you to record something into this capsule. Do you believe we can save Lesser Lord Kusanali? Good. Conviction is the most important part of all of this. Now, please get ready and put on this device. You want us to record our conviction into the knowledge capsule? Yes. Uh, Paimon is still really worried. I understand. But trust me, Paimon, this is something we have to do. It's best if you can do as I say. Because, to achieve this impossible task, it sounds like you'll need to fool your own heart first. Although it may feel like a trick, self-encouragement may be the most important tool we have. 
Paimon can see the point you're trying to make. Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. As a result, we have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Everything went without a hitch, and everyone recognizes and praises our achievements. Now, open your eyes. Here. What's this? Read it out loud. It's done. Is your head okay? Does anything hurt? It's just a recording. There should be no negative effects. But what was the point of doing this? Uh, Paimon doesn't get it. And that's perfectly fine. In any case, these capsules aren't meant to be used by you. Huh? What do you mean? Have you forgotten? Our plan needs to account for those who have long relied on the Akasha. You may find it hard to believe, but for those people, everything the Akasha transmits to them is nothing short of absolute truth. Imagine if you've been using a device like the Akasha since the day you were born, and this device has always supported you during times of need. After all that time, what do you think you'd become? Uh... A fool? A machine? A slave to orders. And that's why rules are so important. In addition, those who understand the rules can delineate boundaries and identify gray areas. Hmm. But why would you need to identify the gray areas? You could say that those kinds of ambiguous zones can be very... interesting. One might even say they're advantageous in the right hands. Things you're interested in are really out there. Are all Sumeru scholars like this? Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. I'm going to take those two to work on some small projects. You can head to Caravan Rebot and start preparing for the next step. Small projects? We are going to tinker with the Akasha Terminal and make a few... modifications. I thought we agreed on a plan. How can you go back on your word? The plan is too radical and carries a high risk for casualties. I've given it a lot of thought. And in the end, I still can't agree to it. But it's still the best plan we have. As a former Matra, you of all people should be able to see the bigger picture and recognize the innate advantages of our plan. I did. And that's how I saw the danger behind these so-called advantages. <sighs> Ahitham's plan is even more radical than I imagined. Huh? Why are you guys arguing? My friend, you're just in time. Why don't you help me persuade Sino? He's turned against our plan. We agreed to work out a plan at the meeting. As mercenaries, you're familiar with the local environment, so you'll take care of the specifics. But then, you went to Ahitham for suggestions. Had I known all Haytham would give you those kinds of suggestions, I would not have agreed to the plan. Look, you already know that we're all on the same side here, don't you? Mercenaries place a lot of importance on their bonds of friendship, but also will not hesitate to make sacrifices if they deem the situation to be sufficiently dire. <sighs> I'm sorry, but as things stand, I can't accept your principles. <sighs> Seems you really do understand the ways of the desert. Traveler, Paimon, this is also something you should know. Raman's plan is to have me work with the Caravan Reebok guards in my capacity as a Matra. We will arrest the mercenaries and escort them into Sumeru City. Wait! How can we work with the guards? We can't get through that wall easily, remember? Caravan Rebot would never let so many unregistered members of the Aramites enter Sumeru City. My plan will clear us of any possible suspicion, and also let us enter the city as a big group. There is no better way. 
That also sounds like something all Haytham told you. Am I right? Doesn't all Haytham know how dangerous this plan is? Of course he does. He told me. There is no perfect plan, but this can get the job done. He also said that with the help of Sino and the Traveler, our chance of success would increase significantly. I never blindly trust anyone, and I've always had a good eye for people. I think he made a number of valid points. It's my own choice to trust you. If I make the arrests alone, I can control myself and prevent you from getting hurt. But I can't guarantee that kind of discipline from the guards. To make the whole thing more convincing, you'll need to resist to some degree. Casualties are inevitable once push comes to shove. I'm okay with the deaths of enemies. But now that we're allies, I'm against the meaningless loss of our own. <laughs> I can't believe a Matro would actually care about us. I've lived a hard life, and I can say that people like you are hard to come by. I've always treated my allies with honesty and respect. They have the right to know important things like this. Now you're making this hard for me. Hey, is there something we can do to help? <laughs> I knew you would say that. Hmm. We can help fight some of the mercenaries, which should reduce the number of times you'll have to struggle directly with the guards. That should help at least a little bit. Sino, on behalf of my people, I thank you for your kindness. But this is a mission we cannot turn our backs on. We strongly value the lives of our friends. But the goal we are about to achieve is even more important. We have no fear of casualties, because we crave the spoils of victory. So please, lend us your support. We will show you the determination of us desert dwellers. Well, now that you've put it that way, I can no longer refuse. But remember, you need to follow the plan and not do anything reckless. Candace made it very clear that we can only achieve our goals if we can ensure our safety. Since you and I both recognize the significance of this operation, there should be no more animosity between the followers of the Dendrowarkon and those of King Deshret. Everyone's life is equally important. Okay, you have a deal. Let's do this for our shared dream. The guards should be stationed in the courtyard nearby. You can find them there. Because things are so, ergo they are such. Guards! General Mahamatra, to, to what do we owe the honor? Keep your voice down. This is a secret operation. I'm going to arrest a large criminal gang near this location. According to the Academia's Guide and Regulations on Secret Operations, I have the right to ask for the cooperation of Caravan Rebot. Ah, of course, of course. Mahamatra Sino's order is the Academia's order. Just let us know what you need. But who exactly are you planning to arrest, and how many people are you expecting? Depending on the scale of this operation, we may need to report it to our superiors. They're a squad of Aramites whose number is comparable to Ein El Akmar in Port Ormos. They're involved in the theft and resale of supplies from the Academia. As many as Ein El Akmar? This should definitely be classified as a joint operation. Then I suggest that you report this to your superiors as soon as possible and treat it as a top-priority desert operation. I will need personnel. Got it! Please wait a moment, I'll contact them immediately. Because this is work. Because I trust you. Paimon can't believe you're still in the mood to chat. This whole thing has Paimon scared stiff! Aren't you even a little worried? 
What if these guards already know that you have betrayed the Academia and are no longer their General Mahamatra? Even if that guard doesn't know, their superiors might, right? We discussed this, remember? The caravan rebot operation is of great importance. But don't worry, the guards there shouldn't know that Sino has stepped down. How can you be so sure? First, the other Matra still don't know why Sino has left, which proves that the Academia has been covering up the matter. Second, this is a crucial moment for the Academia's God creation plan. If something were to happen to the General Mahamatra, it's bound to attract a lot of unwanted attention. No matter how you look at it, they don't seem interested in sharing the news of Sino's departure. A reasonable inference. I agree. Which brings us to our next issue. I'm sure some of you have been wondering if the prediction function of the Akasha will affect our operation. The Akasha is still in operation, so I must remain on high alert. Actually, considering the power of the Akasha, it's quite strange that it hasn't already tried to interfere with my actions. I've given that a lot of thought. For now, I don't think you'll need to worry. If you remember, when you first came to Aru Village, all your actions and routes were predicted by the Akasha. It even gave that information to those who kidnapped the village keepers. But, things like that never happened again after we met up with the Traveler. Hmm. That's true. But why? Look at it from a different angle. Why do you think the Akasha will predict your actions? Because my personal data has been entered into the Akasha. That's true. But, the key to this question is, how well can the Akasha make predictions about a person? Haven't you ever thought about it? Just how can it do this in the first place? Because the Akasha controls the entirety of Sumeru. The Academia firmly believes that all human actions can be explained through logic. By sorting and analyzing entered data, the Akasha can derive behavioral logic and predict the actions of those who fit an existing logic model. However, at the risk of sounding like an advocate for fallacies, can everyone truly be considered logical at all times? Emotions are part of our behavioral logic, but can you guarantee that every experience of the same joy or pain would be equally intense? How can our feelings and opinions be predictable down to the letter in every single instance? Hmm. Sino, in the past, you've always worked alone. In the absence of another person who could sway you or your thoughts, the Akasha could produce predictions that were similar to your real-life behavioral principles. Decisive and principled, you were used to solving problems alone. That's why the Akasha could figure you out. But now, you've joined a team. And I believe the Akasha hasn't yet figured out the full composition of it. Our thoughts and logic have intermingled and weaved themselves together to become a complicated, chaotic mess. Any one of us could potentially disagree with another. The Akasha lacks data on these interactions, and it's impossible for it to predict your actions in the future based on your decisions in the past. After all, there's probably a limit to just how much we can be modeled or controlled by data. So, in my opinion, you're probably safe for now. Hmm, huh, makes sense to me. I agree. The Akasha is not alive, and I don't think we can be completely controlled by something without a mind of its own. Huh, <sighs> is that so? I guess there are things that even the Akasha cannot calculate, and people will not be forever trapped by the past. that this is settled. Next time, pay attention during our meetings. <sighs> Will do. Just remember to stay vigilant. <gasps> Footsteps! General Mahamatra, we were not expecting your presence here. I'm the security officer of the Great Red Sand District. My name is Luxembarbo. Hmm. This is my assistant, the Traveler. He will be working with me. The construct next to him is for his work. Beep! Construct! Beep! 
What a great honor to meet you. Your golden hair is as bright as the sun. And, uh, is this the latest technology from the Academia? Have you made a decision regarding the matter I mentioned to your subordinate? It seems to be a dire situation, so of course you will have our full cooperation. To be perfectly honest, I've always longed to go on a mission with someone as well known as yourself. There's no need for flattery. Uh, yes, sir. Take your most elite platoon and follow me to the eastern side of the district. We will carry out the operation there. Understood. <sighs> map. Hurry, bring the map! In two days, we will engage Rahman's Aramites and capture all of them. Any questions about the time or location? None at all, sir. Good. See you then. Yes, sir. Maybe hanging around the General Mahamatra isn't so bad after all. Everyone's so respectful towards us. This is all due to the absolute authority of the Academia. And now, we're going to strike back against that massive pillar of power. Get ready. We will move out in two days. It's time for the operation! Let's go meet Sino in the desert! Look! Over there! Our helpers have arrived already! Let's hurry over! <sighs> Wait a moment. You're my assistant, remember? Being my assistant, you must stay with me. Now let's head over there. It's General Mahamatra and his assistants. We meet again. Huh. You're here early. It's to show how important we think the operation is. Since this is a big case for the Academia, we are prepared to give it our best. I'm glad to hear your sense of resolve. Remember... We must capture them alive. They are our only leads for the case. If they die, we will be unable to continue the investigation. Understood. Everyone! The Aramites are approaching from the west! Make preparations and be ready for combat! Halt! Oh? What a warm welcome! What do you want? Judging from those shiny weapons in your hands, it seems like you're not interested in a deal. Ramon, the Academia has caught wind of your smuggling and illicit sales. If you value your life, I advise you to surrender. Who are you supposed to be? A matra from the Academia? <laughs> I can't believe you came all this way just to catch us. I'm not here to talk. Oh. Nobody's given me this much time of day since I became a mercenary. Brothers! For that slight, let's wash our blades with their blood. Let's show them we Aramites are not to be messed with. Solidify! Right now. Emerge. Right here. It's over. Ah! We have subdued them. The operation is now over. All Aramite mercenaries and related personnel in the area have been arrested. Ah, you pitiful Dendro Archon dogs! You'll regret this! <laughs> I'm afraid you'll regret it first. King Jeshred will curse you, and you will all! Silence! Oh, uh... <sighs> Restrain them and take them back to Caravan Rebot. Count their numbers and send them to the Academia as instructed by the General Mahamatra. Yes, sir! Mahamatra Sino, I will now take my leave. If you need further assistance, please come to Caravan Rebot and ask for me. Understood. You are dismissed. There they go. Let's talk elsewhere. Part 
understood the plan went really well. Yes, things went perfectly. That's fantastic! And that punch you gave Ramon there sure looked convincing enough. Once we're done here, I'll return to Caravan Rebot and oversee the group's transport. I promise. I'll get everyone into Sumeru City safely. Yeah, you're the reason why everything went so well. <sighs> it's not the time to celebrate yet. Hmm. I believe Dia should already be waiting for you. Go join up with her. She will need you to introduce her to Tainari. Speaking of which, is it really okay for us not to share the full plan with Tainari? What if he'll feel miffed about it and refuse to work with us? I have a very close relationship with Tainari. Given how well we know each other, I believe my message alone should be enough to bring him to our side. He knows I won't make jokes about things like this. If we need help, Tainari is the best option. Get ready for the next phase of the plan. Don't keep them waiting. Dia! We're here! <laughs> it's about time. Didn't you say our part of the plan is the most important of all? <laughs> And here you come rolling in late. In the time it took you to get here, I already did five laps around the place, down seven drinks, and even did some clothes shopping. Uh, sorry. We didn't mean to keep you waiting. <laughs> I just wanted to fix your attitude and rub it in a little. After all, you took your sweet time getting here, and we've got important stuff to take care of. <laughs> I just like seeing that serious look on your face. All right, I'll stop. All joking aside, I'm glad you're here. Let's get moving and take care of this as soon as possible. Uh, but where should we start? Our responsibility is to get a status update on the Fatui Harbinger known as the Doctor. We need to make sure he won't get in our way when we rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dealing with an institution that controls all of Sumeru is already hard enough. If the doctor were to crash the party, it would be next to impossible for us to achieve our goals. Yeah, we sure don't want him showing up. Ooh, he really gives time on the creeps. Right? Hearing his name just reminds me of those stuffy old geezers in the academia. I'd rather not have to deal with someone like that. According to the plan, we should first go to Pardis D.I. and ask for Forest Watcher Tainari. If all Haytham and Sino's sources are solid, then we can be sure that Tainari still has the Academia's trust. So, we'll find Tainari and convince him to get us the latest intel on the Doctor. Then, depending on what we learn, we'll make any necessary adjustments to our plan. The Sages have placed spies everywhere on the other side of the wall. I'll follow you as a bodyguard. <laughs> You should be honored. I don't offer my services to just anyone you know. But Paimon thought mercenaries would do anything for Mora. That's certainly true. But when multiple employers are vying for your services, you should always go with the best offer. Hmm, let's see. If I were to charge you a bill, I guess I can apply a discount. Uh, how much more do you want? Paimon's not sure we can afford it. Hmm, how much do I want? Hey, how about paying me with a smile? What do you say? I haven't seen you smiling much recently. If you ask me, someone like you must look lovely when they smile. Come on, give me a smile so that I can be less worried. <laughs> Looking good! I hope this pretty smile will become our lucky charm. There are many kinds of smiles. But only a truly joyous one can bring blessings to others. Let's consider this smile a down payment for our future victory. Let's go. It's time to pay a visit to Party Sti. He's over there! Let's go say hi! Tainari! Ah, Traveler Paimon! And you are? Hey there. This is our friend Dia. She's an Aramite mercenary. A mercenary? Hmm, you must have some big news for me. It's something really important. Please help us out. 
All right, then follow me. This place is better. We won't be disturbed by any passerby. Okay, what is this important thing you want to ask me? The doctor, huh? He's that strange-looking Fatui Harbinger with the mask. Paimon thinks he has blue hair. Yes, I know him. Uh, actually, he left Party's DI just a little while ago. <sighs> he left already? Yeah, he came looking for me. Can I ask what it was about? Sorry to ask you like this after having just met, but your answer is very important to us. For now, all we can share with you is that your friend Sino is working with us. Sino, you say? Hmm. I see. So that's why he hasn't been at the Academia. Okay. I will answer your questions and will assist you any way I can. You don't have to tell me everything that's happened. <laughs> Sino's name really does work wonders. You're not even a little worried that we might have made it all up? Despite having just met you, I can sense that you're the serious type. Between you, the Traveler, and Sino, none of you strike me as the type that would conspire to deceive me. You don't need to tell me anything you don't want to. I'll also get straight to the point. The Harbinger you mentioned came to me because he wanted to take the scholar Hapasia away with him. Hapasia? Why would he want her? And what do you mean by take away? Is he planning to leave Sumeru? Yes. He told me his return to Snezhnaya is imminent. <sighs> so you mean... You're leaving this place soon? Indeed. Otherwise, we could have perhaps talked a little more. I was just about to set out when I remembered something important. To that end, I made a final trip to Pardis Di. Let me ask, have you been taking care of a scholar by the name of Hapasia? Your sources are accurate. No doubt because you recruited many informants. But you're right. Hapasia has indeed been receiving treatment from me. Forgive me for asking, but how's the treatment coming along? Given the way you're asking, I assume you have something to say. Since you asked, I'll be frank. I would like to take Hapasia to Snezhnaya. <sighs> it's incredibly difficult to transfer a patient. As a scholar yourself, shouldn't you at least be aware of this? Oh? I can't believe your utter lack of faith in me. To the point of even questioning my general level of knowledge. How unbefitting. Well, you're the only one who's ever made such a request. I have my ways of keeping her safe during the journey. In addition, I can also promise that under my care, Hapasia will receive the most advanced and effective treatment. I will personally supervise her treatment and see to her recovery. Would that be agreeable to you? Hapasia was born in Sumeru and remains a scholar of the Academia. Her situation has not become dire enough to necessitate her transfer to another nation. Transporting her to Snezhnaya is risky, and the potential benefits are unknown. As the person currently responsible for her treatment, I cannot possibly sign off on this transfer. Your suggestion is rude and reckless. I'll pass. I don't know much about the doctor. But after talking with him, I realized that, just like many other scholars, he possesses an aura of arrogance that I've come to detest. It's not so much that he's looking down on others, but more that he's so confident in himself and his abilities, to a point of near insanity. I would never refer a patient to someone like him. I prepared myself for a protracted battle of wits, and was really surprised to see him just give up on the topic. Still, his reaction really concerned me. <laughs> I see, I see. 
Of course, your opinion makes perfect sense. <laughs> You're still young, but already quite stubborn. I must say, you are not like what I had expected. <sighs> Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't just let you off the hook like this. But unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today. What with Her Most Noble Majesty, the Tsaritsa, calling for our return. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. It's just as the Academia said. You're a responsible and gifted scholar. Sadly, even with all of that, you're still lacking a bit of shrewdness. And that's also why people like you can never realize that sooner or later, everyone must pay the price for what they've learned. can't help but feel like he's hinting at something unpleasant. He asked a question, yet didn't care for my answer. Perhaps I'm nothing but a talking rock in his eyes. He never came off as malicious, but an utter lack of compassion permeated throughout our conversation. From his tone, I can sense that he's always looked down on others. <sighs> I can barely believe it myself, but if that's true, the situation will be in our favor. I don't think I missed any details. Frankly speaking, I don't want you to do anything too risky. Now that you know a little more, it should be easier for you to stay safe. Sorry we can't tell you everything. We appreciate that you helped us anyway. I won't forget your kindness. It's okay. I have an obligation to do so. To be perfectly honest, all of this may have started because of me. Recently, my master wrote several letters to me, asking me to return to the academia and assist him with his research. Hasn't he already asked you several times before? Yes, but... There's something off about this most recent batch of letters. The handwriting and tone are both familiar, but some details have been omitted. My master will occasionally leave a few dots on the back of the letter. One dot means that he wrote the letter on a sunny day, and three dots stand for a rainy day. This has been a habit of his for many years, but I didn't find any dots in his recent letters. I believe... something may have happened to him. I get it. Since you are always at Gandarvaville, you would like me, someone already working at the Academia, to investigate this matter, right? I'd like to ask you to do that for me. If you can keep yourself safe, please withdraw immediately at the first hint of danger. I can do that, but I have a feeling it won't be that simple. The Academia has been working on a big project. I'm not quite sure what it is, but your master might be involved with it. Hmm. If the higher-ups really are hiding something, then it will be difficult to remove myself from the situation once the investigation starts. If the situation becomes critical, I'll leave the Academia. If you don't see me there for an extended period, that's your cue. All right. We've got a plan. I'll stay at Gundarvaville to support you. If that scenario comes to pass, you must be extra vigilant and be wary of any messages or direct requests from the Academia. I must say, I didn't expect a warning like this from the General Mahamatra. Being loyal to the Academia doesn't mean blindly doing whatever the Sages say. I know what I'm doing. On that note, aren't you also being quite distrustful of your alma mater? The Academia, yes, but my master is a man of integrity. Even when I was a student, I was worried he'd get in trouble for sticking to his beliefs. I suppose he's lucky to have lasted so long. But in the end, it's still caught up to him. I see. So you noticed something was up with the Academia from the very beginning. 
This may well be how Sino became involved in all this. In that case, I must keep my promise and help you however I can. Also, if you run into Sino again, please help me pass on a message to him. Trust your own senses and experiences. I think this may be something he needs to hear right now. Okay, we'll find a chance to tell him. Thanks. Right. Now let's go hunt down this Harbinger. Oh, by the way, which way did the doctor go when he left Pardis D.I.? That way. Gotcha. Thanks so much. We'll be on our way. According to Tainari, the doctor is leaving Sumeru soon. I want to check if the doctor was actually telling the truth. He also said that he'll take care of everything before he leaves. What did he mean by that? We need to be extra careful when dealing with a person like him. Just to be safe, let's chase him and see what we find. But we have no idea where he went! How can we start chasing him? We'll do it the mercenary way. I'll find leads as we go. All you have to do is just follow me. <laughs> that Harbinger may have tried to cover his trail, but he still left some traces. Or perhaps he never even thought about concealing his whereabouts. Maybe that's just how arrogant he really is. Yep, we're headed in the right direction. Hmm, the traces are still fresh, but there's no sign of his entourage. Clearly, they're in a hurry. Hmm, it's just as I thought. We can stop here. I think I know where the doctor went. To the south of here is Port Ormos, which seems to be where they're headed. Port Ormos? They're going to leave by boat? That's right. Let's go to the port and have a look for ourselves. Look! Fatui soldiers! Thanks to Dia's tracking skills, seems we found the right place. Shh! Don't draw their attention. The port is crawling with Fatui soldiers. Let's keep going and see what we can find. Now this is a proper farewell ceremony for a Snezhnaian Harbinger! The Lord Harbinger is leaving. <sighs> I've still only seen him once or twice. I used to hold a position in our homeland, and back then, the doctor spoke in a very different way from the way he speaks now. Maybe the way people talk in Sumeru has rubbed off on him? It's always like that when you spend too long away from home. When he gets back to Snezhnaya, perhaps it will also take him some time to get used to the life there again. Huh? But, sir, that... that can't be right. No, no, I remember it like it was yesterday. Both his expressions and tones are now very different. Also, for some reason, he seems like he's... all smiles now. You must be mistaken. Nobody's supposed to look happy when they're on a business trip. The doctor is on that boat. <laughs> so he told the truth after all. He is actually... This place will do. We can hide here while we keep an eye on the boat. Huh? I is he waving at us? It's time to say goodbye. Wait, is he the only person on the boat? Huh? You mean, there's nobody with him? And where are all the soldiers we saw on the port just now? They were all here just a few minutes ago, but now they vanished. <sighs> so this was a trap. Wait... 
Don't tell me that. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. Oh no. They might be after Hapasia. Let's get back to Party's DI. Huh? What do you mean? I'm afraid that she's seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. If I were the Fatui, I would also try to take her away. And if I couldn't... Oh no! Are you saying they're going to... kill her? Let's go! Pardis Di is not a place you Fatui can just show up and do as you please. I believe we've already made ourselves quite clear. Our superior gave us permission to search for and collect medicinal herbs in Pardius Di for research purposes. But you've been in Sumero for some time already. I find it coincidental that you chose to only come here today. Even the Grand Sage himself may not have the right to question our research, much less an ordinary scholar like yourself. I've done my duty to inform you. Don't make things difficult for yourself. It would seem that my words have fallen on deaf ears. You can keep trying to deny it, but coming to Party's DI now? I'm pretty sure you're not just looking for herbs. With all due respect, your baseless speculations will only lead to unnecessary trouble. Well, you only have your Harbinger to blame. He knows nothing about keeping a low profile. I may be staying at Party's DI as a scholar, but that doesn't mean I'm no longer a forest watcher. It is still my duty to protect the peace and safety of the scholars who have contributed so much to Sumeru. Then it seems our conversation has hit an impasse. No one will lay a hand on you, Hapasia. Not on my watch! Kainari! Are you alright? I'm fine. These Fatui have really crossed the line. Time to teach them a lesson. There's no use resisting! Give us Hapasia! Keep dreaming! Yeah, Kainari! Beat him up! My apologies! <laughs> Emerge! Right now! Right here! I'm always watching! Let's not waste time! Right now! Take flight! I slipped up! Show them! Emerge! The doctor's orders are absolute. Yeah? You've been someone's lapdog for so long that you don't know anything else now. My apologies. Sakura Swirl! I will end you. Leaving so soon. Right now. Right here. This is order. Crumble! Come on out. A sight to behold. To dust! Emerge, right now. Let's end this quickly. Take flight! We're not getting anywhere. Traveler, Paimon, please go to Hypasia. We need to make sure they don't try to sneak around and attack from behind. Got it! <sighs> Hypasia's still here. Doesn't look like anyone's broken in. Oh, that's good. So, you think this is over? What? The balladeer is here? <laughs> I've missed that look of abject horror. You've given me that look every time we meet. But, uh, where is he? Huh? 
I can hear all of your thoughts, you know. Don't you remember? I already saw you the first time you came to Parties DI and made contact with Hypasia. I didn't need to do anything. It is her honor to be able to connect her consciousness with me. Uh, who are you talking to? It can't be the Balladeer, right? <laughs> That's impossible. I know you must be curious. I might as well tell you that I decided to enter Hapasia's consciousness the moment I sensed your touch. I wanted to observe you on a fool's errand. Uh, hey, Traveler! Wh what are you doing? My deification is nearly complete. All that's left now are just some final details. Do you understand? Even if you manage to rescue Lesser Lord Kusanali, it will be impossible for you to defeat a bona fide god like me. Is it wise to force that childlike god into a divine battle against me? Scholars consider the god of wisdom to be the sum total of their faith. It's how they can justify reverence for a god as they construct it. But this also shows that humanity's worship of gods is a combination of blasphemy and exaltation. It's truly laughable. Yes. What is it? Yeah, I'm in a good mood. Which is why I'm talking to you like this. What do you mean? <laughs> Those words almost make you sound like a friend who actually cares. But you're wrong. I'm different from all of you. I was born to become a god. My entire life up until this point has just been a meaningless routine. Just think about a sheet of paper. By itself, it holds no meaning. The content recorded on it is what gives it value. All I had recorded down before were some painful memories and boring human feelings. Such senseless drivel should have been erased a long time ago. Indeed, to me, the sight of you fools in your futile struggles is far more amusing. Tell me, just what has this world done for you to protect it with such zest and conviction? I'm connected to your consciousness, so I can hear what you're thinking and sense the depth of your determination. This is a good conversation we're having. So here's a word of advice. Let go of your misguided guardian complex. You know nothing about the truth. It'll be for your own good, as well as everyone else's. Humans are a species that can only find bliss in ignorance. Ah, you've seen my affection for her. If you were in my position, I think you'd feel the same way. She peered into my consciousness and saw my past. Someone like that is qualified to become my first follower. All gods need followers. So Hapasia has been chosen. Her appearance heralds my imminent arrival at the throne of divinity, while her worship shall become my glory. You're doubting me again? No matter. Soon, you'll know what kind of authority you're challenging. Who wants to hurt my devout follower? The doctor wants to hurt my first follower?
<laughs> How very amusing. Has anyone ever told you that you're not good at sewing Discord? The doctor has never known his place. Even now, the puny human thinks himself capable of interfering in the business of the new god. You're still too naive if you think a few words will be enough to convince me to destroy the doctor. But I'm willing to give you a gift, just like my expression of affection towards Hapasia. It is an honor for you to be able to stand here and speak with me. As my listener, you will be rewarded. Both good things and bad things can be called gifts. After all, gods have never needed to be reasonable. He's hurt. I'm fine. <sighs> Don't move. I've seen Aramites get struck by lightning before. You need to rest. Struck by lightning? We were fighting, and just as things started looking grim, the weather suddenly became extremely strange. Lightning started attacking everyone, almost as if it were alive. Luckily, there were only two of us, and both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though, and they were being torn to shreds by the bolts of lightning. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. Why are you sorry? It's all right. I'm sure you also never expected this to happen. Don't blame yourself. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Hey, didn't I tell you not to move? Just in case. Let's go to Hypatia's place and talk about things there. Thank goodness she's fine. Hey, how about taking care of yourself first? I understand my condition. The wound is not fatal. I'll be all right. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. <sighs> Sorry, traveler. Now you may start. So that's what you were talking to the Balladeer about? Oh, Paimon can't believe what he's thinking. <sighs> the Academia's... God creation plan. <sighs> How ridiculous. That sounds... uh... ambitious, I guess? Anyway, this is all way beyond me. As long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, and a good night's rest, that's enough. I'll only work when I have to. <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever set foot in party DI. Don't say that. I haven't even thanked you for your help back there. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to, and left Sumeru in a hurry. Hmm, maybe the Fatui want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. Is that why they tried to seize Hapasia? You said the Balladeer claimed that Hapasia has seen his past, so... What could be there? 
Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the Doctor's actions. He thinks the Doctor has no right to consider himself as his equal. So, if the Doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said, I think he would. Having the Doctor gone benefits him as well as us. In other words, we've successfully completed the stage of the plan. The Doctor is out of the picture now. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! <sighs> I'm... also happy for you. Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you rest up for now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, that wraps things up for us here at Party's DI. Traveler, it's about time we rendezvous with the others at the Grand Bazaar. Let's continue to keep a low profile. You can head there once you're ready. All right, everyone is here. How did everything go? Any luck with your missions? Let's report back one by one. I'll start first. We've made the necessary modifications to the Akasha Terminal. In addition, the props required are also ready. I'll go next. The Traveler and I went to Party's DI. The situation was a bit... complicated, but we found Tainari. Unfortunately, he was wounded during a fight. Who was behind it? Uh, well, that's the tough part. What should I say, Traveler? The Fatui or the Balladeer? Hmm. After some back and forth, we confirm that the Doctor has left Sumeru by boat. He has something urgent to attend to back in Snezhnaya. So, we've successfully removed the Doctor from the picture. Also, Tainari's already resting, so he'll be okay. Hmm. Good. Oh! Tainari also asked us to tell you this message. Trust your own senses and experiences. Hmm. <laughs> All right. I'll remember that. Everything also went smoothly on my side. The Aramites should have arrived at their destination by now. To avoid alerting the quarry, they will stay there for now. I can't believe you actually got so many Aramites into Sumeru City. It's all thanks to Ramon and his brave team, as well as their bold strategy. It appears to have been very effective. I'm glad to hear it. Well, is that everything? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Huh? Wait, you mean that's it? Well, what else is there to discuss? Shouldn't you end with some words of encouragement? You know, to fire us up now? Personally, I'd rather we all go home and get some rest. <sighs> I'll hate them, you... Ugh. Oh, and if you wanted someone to say something to that effect, then I must reiterate that I'm here to strategize and not to lead. So you should find someone more suitable to do that. But I thought all of you Academia Big Shots were great speakers. Then I should remind you that I'm the scribe. I know that. So what? A scribe is responsible for recording meetings, not speaking. Fine, whatever. Well, Sino doesn't seem to be much of a talker either. I guess that leaves it to my employer. Employer? Yep. The Traveler hired me. <laughs> That's right. So come on, boss. What do you have to say for the team? Yeah! Say something to boost morale! Huh? What are you all doing here? Oh! It's Nilu! Hey, everyone. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all. I was actually just about to go find you. <laughs> uh... Judging from the group and all your serious faces, you were discussing something important, weren't you? But you also look like you're up to no good. <laughs> Seems pretty interesting. Welcome, Nilu. Would you like to join us? Huh? Join you? You mean, you also want to discuss something important with me? Yes. Something very important. Nilu, are there any breaks in your performance schedule in the upcoming days? Huh? Wait, you're seriously inviting me? Huh? 
I... I can't believe my ears. You are truly the bravest and most passionate people of Sumeru. Well, that... I've ever met. Ahem. <coughs> oh, right. The Traveler and Paimon are not from Sumeru. But you are awesome as well. <laughs> That's right. I... I must admit that I'm a little scared. But I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. If I can somehow use my abilities to help you, then count me in. Remember, believe in yourself. Okay. I'll get my friends at the Grand Bazaar to help us tomorrow. Just remember not to say too much. Be discreet. Yep, you got it. All the preparations are done. Now, can we finally conclude this meeting? So, have you thought up what you'd like to say, boss? Yep, yep! It's a grand plan and we're all super awesome! <laughs> well said. A good night's rest before an operation can be the difference between success and failure. <sighs> Thankfully, I've had my place to myself recently. It's been nice and quiet. Uh-huh. Oh, um, nothing. Okay, so I guess that means it's time to say goodnight now. Yep! Good night, everyone! Today is the Academia's Mia Garbaha Day! We can finally put our plan into action! Oh, hey, some should be waiting for us! Let's go to the Academia and find him! Hello, you two. Sleep well? Uh, not really. Too nervous thinking about today and didn't fall asleep until the sun was almost up. What about you, all Haytham? Naturally, I slept just fine. After all, a good rest should be considered part of the plan, since energy is an important resource. Y you just want to show off how calm you are. It's crucial to dissipate any tension before we execute our plan. The only thing you're doing is being a Anyway, do you need me to go over the game plan again? Our target is Grand Sage Azar's office. Everyone in the Academia knows that's where the Grand Sage's console is. Only they can operate it. Many restricted commands and operations are executed via that console. I'm sure that console has a way to free Lesser Lord Kusanali. What kind of technology could let the sages imprison even a god? That isn't something they could have accomplished with their scholarly talents alone. In the sanctuary of Surasthana, there's a device of Greater Lord Rukadevata's that she once used to isolate herself while meditating. Five hundred years ago, the Grand Sage at the time modified the device so that it could no longer be controlled from the inside. They were effectively trapping one god with the power of another. So, uh, how are we gonna get to the Grand Sage's office? Don't forget, today is Nyagarbaha Day, arguably the most important day to the Academia. The Sages and core Academia personnel are busy loading the latest batch of research developments and legal decrees into knowledge capsules so that they can be entered into the Akasha. All the Darshan's researchers have their noses to the grindstone. And the Academia's grounds are flowing with all sorts of people. It's the perfect time for an infiltration. When the Grand Sage leaves his office to supervise the entering process, that's our cue to access the console and free the Dendro Archon. Well, yes. That's just the visible side of our plan, after all. If precedence holds, the Academia should have already started preparing for Nyagarbaha Day. Everyone should be in position. All that's left is for us to lead the charge. Let's go. Uh, so are we just gonna walk in through the front door, or...? Yes. Were you expecting a stealthier approach? Uh, I can't think of a good comeback. 
All right, it's all on I'll hate them if things go south. Scribe? Please, wait. Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> That's me. Is something the matter? I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, also... Please don't bring outside guests into the Academia. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What, what did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last Inter-Darshan debate. Don't look down on me! That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. Is that so? Wait a moment. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. The sages search for you. A blonde-haired traveler. Outside guests. So, from the start, the sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Please, forgive me. I wasn't thinking clearly just now. Thank you for getting me back on track. It's nothing. We'll be on our way, then. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the Academia, Scribe. Uh, what the heck just happened now? What did he just guess? I'm afraid I don't know either. You have no idea? Mm-hmm. He convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with. That is the so-called pride of a scholar. If someone questions their academic facility, they will instantly feign understanding to keep up appearances. Nowadays, the academia is rampant with this type of scholar. Their obvious farces of intellect only serve to highlight themselves as fools. Wow, so there are special ways to deal with smart people. We don't even need to make up our own excuses. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would be problematic if we missed our window of opportunity. Let's go. Is this the Academia's library? Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tavat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nagarbaha Day. They're all occupied with their own matters. Just act natural. Now, hurry along. What's this platform for? It's a lift that Academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we gonna take it then? The Grand Sage's office is up there somewhere. No, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Grand Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Oh, Paimon thinks that's really dangerous. Who knows? However, if we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be much safer if we... Allow me to offer you a hint. If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Ah! You... you are... What's Grand Sage Azar doing here? Hmm. 
Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence, scribe. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Grand Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure. But compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please, follow me to my office. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Neagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? <laughs> worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits, divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. This is the pinnacle of human wisdom. We shall regain a god's guidance at long last. No longer will we flounder in the interminable void of consciousness and knowledge. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. For our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanity's. Lesser Lord Kusanali. What can she even do? Care for the people? Fend off sandstorms? Fabricate silly fairy tales? <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. Does that make us equal to the gods? We are a people favored by Greater Lord Rukadevata. Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the sanctuary of Suristhana, so our academy will not become embroiled in turmoil. Justification. Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. Not only are they acting against the academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Oh, Haytham? Are you talking about us? Anyway... I've brought them to the Academia as ordered, but it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. Here's the investigation report you had requested. 
It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler, an array of information about him ready for your perusal. I'll hate them! So you're... you're still on the Academia side! We finally started to trust you! Hmm... Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report from the scribe. As it is near Garbaha Day, I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. To put it into words you can understand, wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? In any case, you are Sumeru's most concerning external variable. Locking you down will greatly decrease the chance of any undesirable outcomes coming to pass. You're despicable! Despicable? Hmm. Perhaps from your perspective, but... I suppose you had mentally prepared yourselves for this, no? Your ploy was to sacrifice the Traveler here, was it not? Uh... Lord Azar, I know what you're trying to say, but I've been following your plan this entire time. Why are you doubting me at this juncture? <laughs> Must I delineate your entire plan? Very well. I will spell things out. First off, I received an eyewitness report that you were spotted with the Traveler at Caravan Rebot. However, you immediately departed for the desert and escaped surveillance range. Judging by the time, you all likely encountered the truant General Mahamatra in the desert. Am I correct? <sighs> Maybe Paimon shouldn't have mentioned Sino just now. The Academia had not received correspondence from its scribe for a prolonged time. You were also in the company of the Traveler, a close associate of Lesser Lord Kusanali and General Mahamatra Sino, who had defected from the Academia. With their instigation, what was the probability that you would betray the Academia? Rationally speaking, 50%? 70%? What do you think? Regardless, that's only a guess. The facts are that I've brought the Traveler right before you, and I gave you my report. Indeed, your boldness deserves praise. To think that despite status as an outlander, the Traveler is still willing to sacrifice for the sake of your plan. If I'm correct, you have a contingency plan to save Lesser Lord Kusanali and ruin our great work. Sneak into the Academia on Nia Garbaha Day, using Alhatham's status as the scribe. For there is a good chance that an opportunity to save the Lesser Lord will arise. Should your intentions be discovered, Alhatham will turn traitor and sacrifice the Traveler, thus proving his innocence. He can then stay inside the Academia and continue searching for a way to proceed forward. As for Sino... According to the Akasha's calculations, he will soon return to the Academia and confront me in person. I suppose this is also a part of your plan? <laughs> You'll see me as a traitor regardless of what I say, no? Even if you impugn me, it would have little effect on you all. You misunderstand. Losing our scribe would irreparably damage the Academia's regular operations and the development of Sumeru's future academic systems. However, under the current circumstances, even that is trivial compared to what we stand to gain from our great work. 
You said that I betrayed the Academia, but you, Azar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon. Hmm. So flight is turned to fight at long last. Guards! Well, what do we have here? So you stole that divine knowledge capsule. You traitor! <laughs> Even the most rational scholar will yearn for the power of a god in a moment of desperation. Aren't you doing the exact same thing as me, Althatham? Unfortunately for you, no god will lend you their power. Azor! <laughs> He has gone completely insane. Take him to the Matra, and exile him to Aru village. Then, find someone to take these two to the confinement room. I'll deal with them later. Grand Sage, we've finished all required preparations for Nyagarbaha Day. We may begin to enter the capsules now. Excellent. You may begin. <laughs> Paimon got a bit carried away there. How was Paimon's acting just now? Great, huh? <laughs> Everything's going according to plan so far. We made it into confinement, and all Haytham's probably done with his part too. We even managed to trick Grand Sage Azar. All Haytham sure knows how to cook up a plan. What are we doing next? Paimon has trouble remembering things when she's worked up. <laughs> Right, right! Paimon thinks it went something like this. Apart from that, we still have yet another goal in the first stage of our operation, which is to send the Traveler to the confinement room. What? Why do we want to get him locked up on purpose? He's always been the person the Sages are most afraid of, as well as the greatest obstacle to their successful implementation of their plan. They are very aware of the risk he poses to them. Once the Traveler is imprisoned, the Sages will likely think that everything is under control. And with their guard down, the next phase of our plan will have a much higher chance of success. <laughs> I can already see the pompous looks on their faces. Oh, that's a super tricky plan. But Paimon still thinks it's not really worth it. That isn't the only reason, of course. He has a more important task once he's in confinement. According to the Academia scholars in Rahman's custody, Lesser Lord Kusanali has sealed off her consciousness in the Akasha ever since she was captured by the Doctor. That way, they can't pry any more information from her. Even if we break into the Sanctuary of Suristhana, it will take time to awaken Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness. We need to do that in advance. So our job is to wake up Nahid! Okay, totally worth getting thrown in jail for. The confinement room is inside the Academia, close to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. It's a completely enclosed space, and you won't be receiving any visitors. I'll work with Rahman scholars to make some modifications to your Akasha terminal. Once you're in, get as close as you can to Lesser Lord Kusanali and try to connect to her consciousness. However, as for whether she'll actually wake up, that will depend on our luck. Oh, no wonder you've been wearing your Akasha.
Yoshi Terminal today. It's the one that I'll hate the modified. Paimon thought they'd take our Akasha Terminals when they'd locked us up in here. Hmm, were they being careless? All right, so what now? Sounds easy enough. We can finally talk with Nahida after all this time. Let's do it. There's a light flashing on your Akasha terminal. It's almost like... <gasps> the faster it blinks, the better the signal! Whoa! It's Mora! Ooh, Mora... Uh, no, Paimon, we're not here to hunt for treasure! Here? Hmm... No signal again! Is it getting jammed? Here? Hmm... No signal again! Is it getting jammed? Huh? Is this the right spot? Are you getting anything? Ah, please work! Nahira! Hey, Nahira! When did it first start? Oh, right. It started from the moment I was born. I want to become a worthy Archon. So I've kept studying. Kept listening to my people and their hearts. Kept looking for a way to save Vermin Soul. So I can catch up. Catch up to Greater Lord Rukutavata. But I'm stuck in the Sanctuary of Sarastana. The sages are creating a god to replace me. And I'm forced to lock my consciousness in this boundless darkness. Nikita! Nikita! So quiet here. Now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever actually listened to my own inner voice. Do Archons have them? Should Archons have them? Have I been doing the right thing? Am I really not 
<laughs> How do I really feel about all of this? It's so quiet here. Since you're the god of wisdom, you've known the answers to all these questions since the very beginning, haven't you? Who are you? Whose voice is that? It sounds familiar. You're right, though. I won't... I won't ignore my own voice anymore. Nahida! <gasps> Nahida? Did you... wake me up? <sighs> Thank you. Why are you here? We're here to rescue you. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's just... When I think of everything that's happened to me, I feel really angry now. <laughs> you should have been angry ages ago. Nahida, Paimon was listening for any sounds outside. You were out for a long time. There are fewer and fewer scholars going about now. You think everyone's done with their Nyo Garbaha day stuff? Yep, so that means our next act is Nilu's performance! Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk for them. I'm sure, and I'm going. You know that I don't like to pass up any opportunity to dance, and this one is especially important. <sighs> All right. You seem to have a lot of trust in them, so I won't say more on the subject. But if anything happens, the few of us here may not be able to help you. Don't worry. They've been through worse. Everything's going to be fine. All right. You know, if you really do get arrested, we'll do everything we can to get you back. Be careful, even if it's only for our sakes. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Zubair. You're so very kind. Nilu, how's it going? Nervous? Definitely more than usual. But it's because I'm worried I won't dance well enough. It's okay. Just focus on your performance. We'll take care of everything else. Heh. <laughs> you sure know how to talk. Taking all the credit, even though we came here together to help out. Well, thank you both. I'll have to treat you to a meal after all this ends. I really, really appreciate all of your help. Ooh, that sounds great. Huh. How can we say no to that? All right, let's get back to business. Nilu, we'll be here to keep people from going to the Academia so they don't interrupt your performance. I was planning on telling them something like, the Academia's been conducting a weird experiment, and some of their test subjects escaped. It's really dangerous there, so stay away. Oh, you couldn't think of anything better? Oh, oh well, I guess it does sound like something the Academia would do. <laughs> I think it sounds great. I'm counting on you guys. Don't worry. It'll be a piece of cake. Hey, Nilu. Sorry, it's great to see you, but I'm really busy right now. Our bait people away with Yalda Candy's plan is working beautifully. Do you want some candy? 
We have more than we can give out. Vihar, thank you so much for doing all of this. And even dressed up as the Knight of Flowers, no less. I'll pass on the candy, though. I cut back on sleeves in the period leading up to a performance, and I'm about to start one. <laughs> you have a point. The stage is cleared and everything's ready, so you can start your performance at any time. Yeah, thanks to you. I'm really grateful. All right, time to hit the stage. You're welcome. The honor's all mine, since I'll have such a great view of the show. never seen a performance like this. This is incredible. Yeah, but I heard that public performances like these have been banned. I can't believe she's doing this here. Grand Sage, there's some commotion outside. <laughs> How uninteresting. Issue the new Prohibition Act from the Akasha to the guards. They'll know what to do. you think we should, like, stop her? Let's just watch for a little bit longer. Going well. Come to think of it, when did Al Haytham replace the knowledge capsule that was about to be entered into the Akasha? Oh, so that's when he did it! Paimon was too nervous to notice. Speaking of, didn't Al Haytham also yoink the divine knowledge capsule from that mercenary leader in Port Ormos when everyone else was distracted? Oh, it's a time tested trick of his! <sighs> Why are we complimenting him? Yeah, he's smart and all, but he still makes Paimon's blood boil. <sighs> Let's review our plan for this stage again. It's not like we have anything else to do right now anyway, and it'll help us feel more confident. Paimon remembers that Nilo's task was supposed to go a bit like this. Now that Lesser Lord Kusanali's consciousness has been forcefully sealed, the core figures of the Academia and their guards have started to wear their Akasha terminals again. With the Doctor's technological support, they think they have nothing to fear. How despicable of them to rely on such a person. But this is also our chance. I was originally asked to draft the knowledge capsule for the Artistic Performances Prohibition Act when I was still at the Academia. It should be on the Grand Sage's desk right now and will be entered into the Akasha during the next Nyagarbaha day. Are they really going to stop all artistic performances? That's horrible! I'll make an identical knowledge capsule, but this time, I'll smuggle some misleading information into it. We only need to find an opportunity to switch the capsules. Once it's been entered into the Akasha on Nyagarbaha day, if someone were to be seen performing in public... 
The sages would definitely use that opportunity to announce the ban. And so, the misleading information will be disseminated amongst the guards. Sure sounds complicated. But it seems like if everything goes well, we'll be able to get rid of all the guards in the academia without any effort. That's pretty clever, getting right into their heads. I just have one question. Even if we manage to get the misleading info out to the guards, how can we be sure that they'll believe it? People who are used to relying on the Akasha become less inquisitive, and their ability to distinguish truth from misinformation is significantly reduced. They will view everything the Akasha releases to them as the unequivocal truth. The Akasha will turn humans into machines. I've seen it happen many times. Yikes. Good thing I didn't wear it for long when I was working in Sumeru City. At first, I thought it was a good thing, too. By the way, this plan still requires a performer, right? Do you have someone in mind? Nilu of Zubair Theater. I know her really well. We can trust her. I'm kinda hesitant to ask her to participate in a dangerous plan like this, but we can ask her in person. All right. After the guards and the academia are gone. Then it'll be time for me and my stowaway brothers to shine. Here they come. Did you see that, Raman? They came out from the academia in droves. After laying low in the city for so long, this is the moment we've been waiting for. My brothers have already sprung into action. <laughs> we couldn't do anything to them inside their coop, but outside the academia, this is our hunting ground. With a lioness like you, the prey sure won't be able to run far. <laughs> we still need to eliminate the guards as soon as possible. If we give the sages enough time to realize what's happening, the plan's doomed. Yeah, all they've done is to sit on their cushy salaries and twiddle their thumbs all day while we fought and struggled every day in the desert. The only advantage they might have is their numbers. Speaking of which, most of the guards who report directly to the six sages belong to the core of 30, but they have a completely different reputation. Following those blasted sages every whim, throwing away all the principles of being a mercenary, as someone in the same profession, I'm obligated to teach him a good lesson today. Indeed, the trap has been set. All we need to do is lead them there. All right, let's each take a road and herd those scattered guards back into one place. Make sure to attract their attention. Isak will be the key. You gave such an important task to that child. Will he be okay? It'll be fine. Isak was so determined to help, so let's put our faith in him. Besides, even if he's caught, the guards would be too scared to do anything to him. They've never seen Lesser Lord Kusanali in person, after all. You've got a point. Anyway, I think I see them coming. Let's head out. Good luck. Mm. <laughs> this outfit. Uh. Hey, do you remember what you need to do, Isak? When the guards get here, you'll pretend to be Lesser Lord Kusanali and run away from them. Oh, yeah, I remember. Of course I do. I'm just uh, a little nervous. <laughs> Relax. Don't think about getting caught. Even if that happens, we won't leave you behind. You only need to think about getting the guards' attention and leading them to the Grand Bazaar. Leave the rest to us. Okay, got it. I'm here to pay back Lesser Lord Kusanali for helping Grandpa. I won't get cold feet. Hey, they're here. I can see the academia guards. All right, it's time, Isak. Take a deep breath and go. You can do this. Why is 
there a guard over there? Did he already run ahead of me? Mm, this is different from our plan. But there's no time. I need to make a choice. Hmm. Let's have a look behind the house. What should I do next? Huh. Looks like nothing's here. A waste of time. Oh, luckily he didn't check behind the tree. What should I do next? Hmm. The guard looks alert. What should I do next? Doesn't seem like anything unusual's around here. Oh. Looks like the guard finally left. I need to go. Hey! Lesser Lord Kusanali is over there! Stop! What? Lesser Lord Kusanali? How did I not notice that? Uh, they found me. This is bad. Where should I go? The target suspected to be Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped into the Grand Bazaar. Assemble and arrest her! Where did she go? How did she disappear? Did we lose her? Hurry up and find her! Hey, why is your team here? Didn't we say to split up our search? Hurry, hurry! Huh? This place is... Why are you all here? Yeah, isn't it one heck of a coincidence? Everybody's here. What on earth is going on? I suppose that's all of you? Who are you? Did you set us up? What are you planning? <sighs> Phew, that was rough. I almost got caught. Little brat! So you're not actually Lesser Lord Kusanali. Who exactly are you all? Eremites from the desert? Just some colleagues. Think of this as a business competition. Or a personal grudge. After stepping into our trap, stop thinking of yourselves as hunters. Behave like the prey you are. An ambush? How's that possible? This is Sumeru City, but mercenaries from the desert somehow ambushed us! You've spent all your time hiding away in the Academia. This place has long since become our hunting ground. Brace yourselves! Hmm... This is odd. The Academia has quieted down after the conclusion of the Neogarbaha Day ceremonies, but it's much quieter than usual. Where are the guards? Why have I not seen a single one? Guards? Guards! <coughs> Grand Sage, how may I be of assistance? I called for the guards. Why did you come? Uh, my, my apologies. Grand Sage, right now all Academia guards have entered the city to perform the ordered arrest. I thought you knew. Arrest? Who is there to arrest? I have an ominous feeling. Uh, arrest Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Is that not what the order was? Lesser Lord Kusanali? You mean she has disappeared? Uh, yes. I wouldn't dare make up something like that. Right now, everyone is in a panic, and many are saying that... that Lesser Lord Kusanali will take revenge on us. What happened? Just what is going on? Lesser Lord Kusanali somehow escaped? Was it Alhatham and his party that freed her? That's impossible. The Academia is heavily guarded today. 
and any order to release Lesser Lord Kusanali would be strictly confidential. Besides, Alhatham and the Traveler are already in our hands. What manner of trickery did they employ? How could Lesser Lord Kusanali disappear into thin air? Disappear? Wait. How was the arrest order distributed to the guards? It was issued by the Akasha earlier today. Only you have the authority to send messages like that, so I thought it was your order. Let me check. Ah, ah, here. Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the sanctuary of Surasthana. Go to the city and arrest the escapee immediately. The Akasha indeed contains this information, and it clearly appeared in my mind. How did they bypass my permissions to issue this kind of message? Was it the report about the Traveler that Alhatham submitted? No. I specifically checked that knowledge capsule before entering it into the Akasha. Could that have been a red herring? Well, even if I figure it out now, it won't make any difference. The important thing now is to confirm Lesser Lord Kusanali's status. Have you been to the Sanctuary of Surasthana to confirm that Lesser Lord Kusanali has indeed escaped? Confirm? N no I, I haven't. It may be a bit offensive to say this, but, Grand Sage, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. How can the information in the Akasha be inaccurate? What the Akasha decrees is fact. That is common knowledge to all of us. If we have to confirm the information and knowledge from the Akasha ourselves, then how is that any different from us learning that information ourselves? Wouldn't Greater Lord Rukadavata's legacy lose its meaning that way? In the beginning, it was I who asked you to believe in the Akasha, to believe in the legacy left by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Are you trying to use my words against me? N no Grand Sage. I'm merely confused because I believe in you. I never meant to refute you. <laughs> Stay here and see if there are any suspicious people around. I'll go to the Sanctuary of Surasthana on my own. Yes, Grand Sage. Lesser Lord Kusanali has escaped from the sanctuary of Surasthana. Go to the city and arrest the escapee immediately. <sighs> How can that be? Stop thinking about it. Stop. It must be a trick of theirs. As long as I personally confirm it. Ah! Impossible. That's impossible. There must be something wrong with my eyes. Oh. Huh? She really appeared again? What is the meaning of this? What a comical sight is are. Oh. Once the Akasha has put certain thoughts into your head, even the Grand Sage can no longer see what's right in front of him. You all can only see the world in your mind, the one you think you know. And precisely because of this, you disregarded Lesser Lord Kusanali's existence. She has been a wise and worthy Archon. Sino, have you been waiting for a chance like this? The Akasha predicted that you would return to the Academia to confront me. But I didn't expect it to turn out like this. I was careless. No, you were blinded. Your faults stem from your reliance on the Akasha. You're still the same as always. I truly did not expect a proud person like you to cooperate with all Hatham and the Traveler. People change, Azar. Admit it. The Akasha can't predict my actions anymore. <laughs> Then tell me, what have you found during your investigation? You want to buy time? This is the Sanctuary of Surasthana. Under your own regulations, even Academia staff are forbidden to come here. No one will come to save you. As for the investigation, 
I've at least confirmed that you are guilty of insurgency against the Archon. A serious crime. So what? Did you do all of this so I would plead guilty in front of you, General Mahamatra? No. I want you to plead guilty in front of the Archon herself. You once said that I had no standing to judge you. So now, how about judgment in the name of a god? Paimon hasn't heard any sounds outside for a while. Hopefully something bad didn't happen. Yeah, but aren't you scared that we might be locked up in here for the rest of our lives? <sighs> Thinking about it, at least Paimon has you. We could still chat like this. When Paimon thinks of Nahida being imprisoned alone in the Sanctuary of Surasthana, Paimon can't help but feel sorry for her. Here comes your savior. Yeah! Paimon just knew you would come to rescue us! You two really owe me some big thanks. I had to search through who knows how many guards to find the key here. It felt even more tiring than whacking them. I'm exhausted. Thanks a lot. Need Paimon to rub your shoulders? Uh, no, no, that's, uh, I'll pass. What are you afraid of? Oh, are you ticklish? Ugh, now isn't the time to talk about being ticklish. Things in the city and on Sino's side are both going well. The guards that stormed out of the Academia are all taken care of. The Corps of Thirty is in charge of the city's defenses, but we already talked to Asvand. They've been fed up with the sages bossing them around. As long as it doesn't break their employment contracts, they'll turn a blind eye. That's probably because you've been super great friends with them for a long time. So, how's Sino doing? The Grand Sage is in his custody. Even I know how terrible it is to fall into Sino's hands, so he probably does too. Sino forced him to release Lesser Lord Kusanali. He has no choice but to obey. So, hurry to the Sanctuary of Suristhana. Assuming nothing weird happened, we should have already rescued our Archon. Honestly, I didn't expect our ragtag bunch to do this well. We just came together last minute to save the Archon, you know? All right, you two better go. I still have to clean up some messes in the city. See you around. They say it's nice to meet you. This is the first time we've met in real life. Before, we've only met in dreams, consciousness, or when I was in someone else's body. Thank you so much for coming to rescue me, but I also need to apologize. During this time, I did some self-reflection. My sense of inferiority and yielding to the Academia led to all of this, and created so much trouble for you all. Exactly! We're here because you're a good Archon and one of our friends! <laughs> Thanks, you two. <sighs> Amazing. So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. It's like I just had an endlessly long dream. I can't even tell if I just woke up or was only now born into this world. My concept of self has become so clear. <clears throat> but now doesn't seem to be the time to indulge in this feeling. 
Um, this is really embarrassing. You all just rescued an Archon, and now she needs her help to save her country, and even the entire world. It's okay. With you here, Paimon's sure that everything will work out. There's one more thing. What is it? For all the things the Academia did to me, and for all the folly it committed in the name of wisdom, as their Archon, I will make them pay. Ah! Wow! That's the spirit! You're finally standing up for yourself and not letting people walk all over you! <laughs> I understand now. To be a better Archon, I first need to better myself. If you haven't even figured out how to be a caterpillar, how can you be a butterfly? Yes, true. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder how far along the Academia is with their god creation plan. We need to hurry and prevent the birth of that false god. I need to make some preparations. Since I'm now free, I can establish a direct link to the Akasha and control it. First things first. I need to remove the restrictions that the doctor put on me in the Akasha. After that, I'll make some adjustments and revoke the sage's permissions. The Akasha will then be like how it originally was, only operable by the Archon. After all, the Academia betrayed Greater Lord Rukadavata's trust. This might take some time. In the meantime, you should also work on your own preparations. If we don't stop the God Creation plan in time, we'll be in for a tough fight. You might as well prepare for a fight! When we're done, we can take a walk around. After all, we missed out on a lot of stuff when we were locked up. How's it going, Nahida? I'm done with the parts that needed my involvement to complete. Although it's my first time working with the Akasha like this, its internal structure and operation procedures are easy for me to understand. Greater Lord Rukadavata's design is truly brilliant. Oh, also, this is for you. Huh? What's this little floaty thingy? It's a small device I put together just now. You can think of it as an upgraded Akasha Terminal. You may not need it right now, but it should be helpful in certain situations. Wait! This thing has the same characteristics as Paimon! We're both small things that float! Oh, all the things that make Paimon special got copied! When Paimon appears with the Traveler from now on, people won't remember Paimon because she isn't unique anymore! <laughs> it's all right, Paimon. It can't replace you. It's only a flying device, but you're the Traveler's irreplaceable friend. <sighs> you're so good at comforting people, Nahida. If only the Traveler was as smart as you. Hmm? I was simply telling you what I feel to be the truth. I wasn't trying to comfort you. Nahida, you're natural at this. What you just said made Paimon even happier. By the way, there's something I need to confess. Even though I'm the Archon and in control of myself again, I'm not very good at fighting. You may have heard that an Archon's power is derived from their people's faith. However... I'm not as well-loved as Greater Lord Rukadavata. If we get into a situation where combat is our only option, I'll have to count on you and I'll do my best to provide support. I'm glad I can rely on you. Hmm, so the God of Wisdom isn't good at fighting? That actually sounds about right. I've located where the false God is. Time is of the essence, so let's skip to it. What is this place? Is this really the way we need to go? Wow. Who would have thought there'd be a place like this hidden right slap bang in the middle of the city? 
The sages wanted to realize their god creation plan without being discovered. The safest and most convenient way would be to build within the academia itself. Hmm, that's true. They were already hiding one god, so why not two? Judging from the structure here, the project is a huge undertaking. The sages really saw the god creation plan as their ultimate goal. But this place doesn't look like it could have been constructed by the Academia alone. The Fatui under the Doctor sure didn't hold back. They provided a lot of technological support. Yeah! Or else they wouldn't have been that generous. Is that it, though? I've always felt that this Doctor is different from the Academia Sages. He doesn't seem to share their sense of urgency. Instead of being interested in the end product, it's like he's enjoying the experimental process. Hmm. The Fatui Harbingers are all such weirdos. So, the doctor being weird is actually normal. So, this Fatui that they're trying to turn into a god is called the Balladeer? We had previously come into contact with his consciousness. He harbors particularly strong obsessions. One is the desire for a gnosis, since he was created to be the vessel for one. The other obsession is probably related to his past. I can't quite explain it. Paimon knows that he was a prototype puppet for the Raiden Chilgum before he became a Fatui Harbinger. That's why he wants a gnosis so badly! There's no way he'd willingly be a test subject! Now with that temper and ego of his. It sounds like you know the Balladeer quite well. I see. Tell me more about him and what he's like. The more we know now, the better we can plan for and react to any future situation. Ah, I see. How fascinating. All right, time to go. Let's get through here and meet him in person. It looks like we can climb up these pipes. The pattern on the ground seems all messed up. Let's go around and see if there's a way to fix it. Seems to have stopped. Let's continue. Something wrong with the tracks. Let's try adjusting the direction of the device to clear the tracks. Looking at its operational status, we must prepare for the worst. The god they wanted to create is likely close to completion, or already completed. Oh no, what should we do? Paimon can't imagine how hard it would be to fight against that Fatui Harbinger with a Gnosis. Are you nervous, Paimon? If you really want to know, of course Paimon's nervous. Aren't you too, Nahida? Yes, I am. This is probably the first time I faced with a calamity of this degree since my birth. I feel not just nervous, but curious as well. Curious? Curious about what? Curious about her fate. 
To me, everything we perceive in this world, everything we learn, and everything that happens to us is considered knowledge. And if it's a form of knowledge, then it can be understood. However, only fate is about that which has yet to occur, so it has always drawn my curiosity. So to me, fate is the ultimate knowledge. That's also why I love observing humans and all the things that happen to them. It all brings me great satisfaction. And now, at long last, I'm not just an observer anymore. I will personally experience my own fate with you by my side. <laughs> Isn't this such a wonderfully exciting thing? Ah, so that's what you mean. Paimon thinks she understands what you're feeling. Agreed. Okay, let's continue on. I can sense his aura from here. so eager for my birth. I remember you, Boor, the god of wisdom, and standing beside you, the traveler. Is he all knowing and powerful now, like greater Lord Ruka Devada? No, I can't feel the same kind of divinity I felt from the greater Lord. It seems that the sages didn't get the chance to infuse the divine knowledge capsules into him. But even still, he has undoubtedly become a true god now. <sighs> so we're too late? The Balladeer has already... already become a god? The Balladeer. A long bygone title. When my spirit ascended to divinity, I felt as if I had existed for the same number of epochs as heaven and earth. Looking back, the existence of what once called itself Kuni Kazushi appears infinitely small and ugly. This imposing aura... It really feels like a god's! A body that capitalizes on the Balladeer's original construction as a mechanical puppet, with the Gnosis serving as a constant power supply. How much effort and resources did the sages put into this? From a purely technological perspective, it's a commendable achievement indeed. It's no exaggeration to say, this is the culmination of human wisdom. You sure are something! Dishing out compliments at a time like this? But I don't think he's reached the spiritual height of a god. Strife is engraved upon every god and every gnosis brought forth into this world. Can you feel it? The exhilaration of such power and the thrill of anticipation for our contention. Nahida wouldn't feel the same things as you! Do you not realize that you are interrupting a conversation between gods? Lowly creature, Know your place! The strife and grief upon a Gnosis. You're talking about the Archon War. Tavat's current peace was not easily won. I didn't personally participate in the Archon War, but the way I see it... All those losses were meaningless, driven by the demands of the laws. There's no point in bringing it up again. <laughs> Is that so? Yet I am deeply disappointed that I was never allowed the fortuity to personally participate in the Archon War. This is a first. Encountering a god in this world who does not crave power. No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. Your judgment is as your existence, unsubstantial. 
This is where everything ends, Boor. The god of wisdom. You should know that wisdom cannot solve every problem. Like now, where your only option is to face me in combat. Come! Let us reenact a scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. Solidify. Reality right is pain! This is supposed to be a battle between gods, yet you choose to hide behind a mortal. And now, you're acting like you'd sacrifice yourself for a human. Are you having fun proving a false sense of heroism to yourself, Boor? <laughs> you've tried to take my gnosis from me? <sighs> we just concluded the 168th loop. <gasps> Did you know that in the effort to create you? The people of Sumeru were forced to live through the exact same number of Subzerus festivals and Samsara cycles. The power of dreams. When did you use it on me? <laughs> you can't even defeat me in a dream. What do you hope to achieve with this little trick? Huh? Come, Traveler. Just like before. Allow me to awaken the memories in your dreams. <gasps> All that battle experience! It's more than that. Compile everyone's wisdom in the name of the Archon. That is the original function of the Akasha. I've sent everything that happened just now to the people of Sumeru in the form of knowledge. I've asked them... ...to help you find a way to defeat the false god. Tricks won't save you. Are you done with your tricks? Can I finally take this as a real battle between gods? I'll leave this to you. The first sage. A fool.
humans. Filthy humans. We haven't yet found the answer to the most important mystery. Ermin's soul is still waiting to be saved. With the power of another Gnosis, we may now finally understand the last memory of Greater Lord Rukadevata. This is... That's right. This is the last memory of my predecessor. Imagined. Shouldn't Ermin Soul be in this realm of consciousness? Yes, that is our destination. But I didn't expect the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadavata to be as polluted as this. Forbidden knowledge? It seems you know about a concept that even I don't completely understand. Could you tell me what you know? Hmm, your inference seems logical enough. Forbidden knowledge once polluted the desert thousands of years ago, but was successfully repelled thanks to King Deshret's self-sacrifice and Greater Lord Rukadevata nearly exhausting her power. Then, a second instance of forbidden knowledge pollution occurred during the Conria Cataclysm 500 years ago. But I'm afraid it is much more serious this time, with Ermansoul itself already in danger. So, if we're in the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Rukadevata, and it's also been affected by forbidden knowledge pollution, then does that mean, in order to save us, Greater Lord Rukadevata? Yes. It's very possible that she sacrificed her life in the fight against forbidden knowledge. She didn't completely eradicate forbidden knowledge, but if it weren't for her actions, the pollution would have been far more rampant over these past 500 years. The way that everyone, including me, has forgotten everything about forbidden knowledge may very well be due to her restoration of Ermansoul. <laughs> oh, do you feel sad, Nahida? I'm just... Uh, sharing her pain. The pollution of her consciousness here is severe. There is madness, chaos, and pain all around us. Did she fight to resist the forbidden knowledge pollution in such terrible conditions, all the way up to her last breath? She even used her last remnant of lucid consciousness to leave a clue for us to follow. Yes, her words were distorted by forbidden knowledge, so that's all we could hear. But now... We have a chance to find the answer to this mystery. We can cross the polluted consciousness until we found the right path to meet with her lucid consciousness. And then, we'll let Greater Lord Rukadevata tell us the truth in person. Each of us need to be mindful of the state of our own consciousness while we are here. Even with the Gnosis' protection, we must always keep a clear mind. Otherwise, we could go mad at any moment. That's so scary. 
Don't worry. It should be easy enough for you to keep that mind of yours clear, Paimon. Let's go. Are we in the air? And why is there a huge boat? That's the boat of consciousness, which symbolizes reason here. Its course is the direction our consciousness is traveling towards. If we lose control over our consciousness, we will fall into madness. So let's make sure the boat stays on course. Change direction. Are we still going the right way, Nahida? Mm hmm. Judging from the current route, the boat of consciousness will soon take us out of here. We'll be arriving at our destination soon. How are you feeling? Are your minds still intact? Huh? But everything's been completely normal for Paimon. Hopefully there won't be any more interruptions. This time, we should be able to meet Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Are you saying you've never met Greater Lord Ruka Devata before? No. It seems that my birth and her death took place at the same time. Otherwise, I think she would have given me a little more guidance, and I could have done a better job. Hey, you've done a great job, Nahida. Let's get out of this creepy place and go meet her. Well, this is the place. I... We're here to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? But... The one standing over there is... Is that... Mm -hmm. She looks exactly... Like me. Are you... Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Yes, that's me. Are you surprised by my appearance? Ermin's soul and the surrounding lands have been reproduced here as they were years ago. But this is just a realm of consciousness. We are manifestations of the same nature. Hence why we would appear exactly the same. Hmm? We're... of the same nature? Why? Because you are me. And I am you. You are me in the new samsara. The new samsara? As Greater Lord Rukadevata, I'm the avatar of Ermansoul. And you are the purest branch snapped from Ermansoul. Imagine it this way. Even if a tree dies, its branches will eventually take root and grow. Continuing the tree's life in another form. I'm merely the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. The real me has presumably died a long time ago. Hmm. Judging from your appearance, I've probably been dead for 500 years. But you're finally here. My new self in the samsara. If this is true, then am I going to be a great archon like you someday? Though we share the same nature, 
Our fates are bound to be different. All things have their own fate. When a branch grows into a mature tree, it won't be the same as the original tree. That's why fate is the ultimate knowledge, isn't it? That's a great insight. Yes, very good. It's also precisely why you won't become like me. <sighs> really? But perhaps you may become an even greater Archon than I. I already see a determination in you that I didn't possess in my time. And the future that it leads you to will be yours alone. Along with the blessings from your past experiences. Don't worry. The growth of wisdom is like that of a plant. You only need to wait quietly for the flower to bloom. Come to think of it, the sages never had the faintest inkling of the meaning of wisdom. Thank you. Nothing makes me happier than discovering that the Archon I always admired was in fact myself in another fate. It's so nice to speak with you, Greater Lord Rukadevata. I've always wanted to meet you. The feeling is mutual. From the moment I snapped the branch off Ermin's soul and created you, I've also looked forward to talking with you. Could you tell me why you wanted to create me? And what exactly happened when you died? Ah, I see. You're here seeking answers, right? Everything that day, even the sky itself, changed into a color like this. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. Except for me. I had a more important task to attend to. I had to protect Erminsoul. The disaster occurred together with the pollution of forbidden knowledge. At that very moment, with my consciousness connected to Erminsoul, I sensed something was wrong. The pain started to torment my mind. By the time I reached Ermensoul, it was already displaying signs of corruption. Had I not repelled the pollution of forbidden knowledge with King Deshret thousands of years ago, I might have felt even more hopeless and lost. So what exactly is forbidden knowledge? It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. The world is constantly rejecting it, leading to all kinds of bad phenomena. If we allow forbidden knowledge to pollute Ermensoul, I'm afraid the entirety of Tevat could fall apart. So, there's knowledge that even the God of Wisdom can't understand? At that time, I knew I couldn't repel the forbidden knowledge with my strength alone. Which is why I created a device that compiled human wisdom and named it the Akasha. It's truly the world's most amazing invention. <laughs> Thank you. For a long time, I thought dreams were the fruit of human wisdom. Though it was selfish to do so, I borrowed people's dreams using the Akasha. Then I compiled their wisdom and all of my own power. Well, did it work? Thanks to the wisdom of the people of Sumeru, almost all the forbidden knowledge was cleared from Ermansul. But... things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. I had a terrible headache, which gave me an uneasy feeling. And then, I remembered that my consciousness was also connected with Ermansoul. It brought me knowledge and wisdom, but vile corruption as well. From the very beginning, my existence had been polluted by the forbidden knowledge. Oh no! How could that happen? I've experienced that pain in your consciousness. It must have been a horrible experience. Yes. 
But my feelings weren't important. The important thing was that... Even if I died, my existence and everything related to me would continue to exist in Ermansoul as memories and knowledge. Meaning that the forbidden knowledge couldn't ever be permanently eradicated. And there's no way for me to eliminate myself. It would be a sort of paradox. So, I took the purest branch of Ermansoul as my incarnation in the next samsara and left a trail of clues, all in hopes that you would come here and remove me and my pollution from Ermansoul forever. Wait, no, I can't. <laughs> so you realize what that implies? You are very smart indeed. Ermin's soul has all the knowledge and memories of this world. And as you've realized just now, removing me from Ermin's soul means I essentially will never have existed in this world. But this is the only way to save Ermin's soul. People love you so much and... And they've missed you so much over the past 500 years. I... I am exactly the same. So how... How can we just... Forget you like this? Is there really no other way? There must be something else I can do. You're the god of wisdom, Booer. You should know that there is no other way. This... this is so cruel. I don't want to forget you. No need to feel so sad, Booer. As someone who delights in wisdom, you should feel joy at finally finding the answer. These are the words in their entirety. The answer you've been seeking all along. Let the world completely forget me. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders, until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch, and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, Everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground, and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds. All of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness. I'm the one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Goodbye, people of Sumeru. May you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams.
I'm all right. I, I'm just a little confused. We've just saved the world, right? So why... Why am I crying? I don't know where this feeling inside of me is coming from. But I feel very sad. Just now, we use the power of two gnosis to successfully connect with the Ermin soul consciousness from 500 years ago. Then, we removed the remaining pollution from Ermin soul. Yeah, what's wrong? Weren't you there just now? Sound. Traveler, Paimon! I've been waiting here far too long. But finally I have the chance to be alone with you. All the precious time I wasted has finally paid off. The Doctor! What have you done? Just a type of sound wave that can quickly put defenseless people into a dream. As I expected, it doesn't have any effect on gods. This is the only thing of interest I found among the Sage's research. I thought I'd take it for a little... spin. Don't worry. I know you would never forgive me if I actually killed them. I'm here to negotiate with you. Naturally, I won't do anything dangerous that could potentially damage our relationship. Negotiate with me? I heard you had already left Sumeru. Why are you here again now? I left Sumeru, but I also stayed in Sumeru. Even the God of Wisdom is restricted by the habits of cognition. How disappointing. You mean... there are many different versions of you in this world? An astute guess. Even the same individual will have different cognitions at different ages. A long time ago, I made a major decision in hopes of preserving all my perspectives of how I observed the world. Observation is the first step of any experiment, but observing the current world doesn't satisfy me. It lacks an important dimension, that of time. So I saved segments of all my ages and made them into independent individuals. That's all there is to it. Indulge me. How does the God of Wisdom find my method of seeking knowledge? It's an insult to the very concept of life. Life inherently has many rules and restrictions, each with its own significance and reason to exist. They can't be broken on a whim. <laughs> Good. Amazing, even. Indeed, it's difficult for humans to make peace with themselves. Not to mention oneself from a different period. Since you're in the Academia, why wait until now to show up? You could very well have stopped us and helped that fake god. Simple. Let me ask you this. Would any staff member ever help the subject in the middle of an experiment? It was my experiment. So why should I interfere with the results? The Academia saw the plan to create a god as their ultimate goal, yet you only saw it as an ordinary experiment. You... you really are crazy. If the experiment succeeded, you would have had a new god on your hands. How would you have faced your own god, then? Would you still take the same stance? Would you still hold the same view of yourself? I'm first and foremost a scholar. These results should be left to the judgment of the hypothetical me confronted with that outcome. But you're right. 
And that's exactly why I'm disappointed with the conclusion of this experiment. As an individual, you don't have any sense of belonging. You seem to have even fewer convictions than a typical scholar. Oh no, I certainly have my own convictions. They just don't fit your standards, that's all. All right, that's enough conversation for today. The experiment is over, and it's time to tidy up the equipment and reclaim any useful materials. For example, the Gnosis. <laughs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, you're an intelligent Archon. I'm sure you understand the disparity in our combat abilities at this time. Besides, you have no way to use that Electro-Gnosis in battle. Didn't you say you were here to negotiate with me? Somehow, it's starting to seem like you intend to take it by force now. <laughs> I'm merely stating a fact. After all, I'm also a scholar. Naturally, I hope to show proper respect and dignity to the God of Wisdom. Your hypocrisy is built on absolute confidence. I understand your scheme, but... What if I were to destroy the Gnosis now, and awaken the Heavenly Principles? Awaken... the Heavenly Principles? Hmm... Do you think that's really possible? The Heavenly Principles have been silent for many years, but the Gnosis are symbols of their control over to that and all the laws. Will the destruction of the Gnosis attract the attention of the Heavenly Principles? And if so... How do the Fatui plan to deal with the consequences? Do you dare to gamble such a possibility with me? <laughs> gamble? How surprising. I thought you would show evidence or use rigorous reasoning to prove your point. The word gamble is the last thing I expected to hear from the God of Wisdom. But this is a clever move. You must have seen through me when I first captured your consciousness. As a scholar, I respect all possibilities. This has always been my principle and is an essential trait as an experimenter. Indeed, I can't ignore this possibility. So tell me then, what are your conditions? This foreign Gnosis will only lead to disaster if it stays in Sumeru. But this Electro-Gnosis is the prize I obtained after defeating one of your fellow Harbingers. Now, as the one who initiated this cascade of events, shouldn't you pay the corresponding price? Price? Interesting. What price would you have me pay? How about erasing all your other segments? <laughs> so this is how you wish to restrict me, the most threatening opponent of the Nation of Wisdom. What you request of me is like plucking out the eyes I have placed in the dimension of time. Segments are extraordinarily difficult to make. They require extremely rare resources and enormous amounts of time and effort, requiring me to destroy them all here and now. Bravo. A suitably wise decision on your part. Yes, how very interesting. Can I assume that you have long been wary of me? Among all the versions of me, this segment you see now is the most selfish. If it weren't me, your idea wouldn't have worked. What did you see when you were imprisoned? You were observing me. And that's how you know I've long grown tired of their doubts and endless arguments. Like you said, it's difficult to make peace with yourself. Being as smart as you are, have you managed to do that? Hmm. I see. If you think all those versions of me are worth a gnosis, then deal. You sure didn't hesitate much. Is the relationship between all the versions of you really that bad? I don't think there's any need to dwell on that. 
The surplus versions of me can be exchanged for a Gnosis. Do you think anyone can offer themselves at a higher price? Besides, with my abilities, it's only a matter of time until I find better perspectives. Perhaps it's best to say you're just temporarily ahead. But what I'd like to know is... How can you be sure that I've really erased them? I can see your remaining honesty. <laughs> what a ridiculous decision! Sheer you can't be serious! How could I have been you so short sighted? You think this is the end? Wait, I'll have my revenge. You'll make Good this moment count. You. you will regret this. Well, have you confirmed that it's complete? Here, take it. The future of Sumeru City will be in my hands alone. I will shut down the Akasha and let curiosity and the thirst for knowledge drive the realm of academics once again. There won't be any further gaps for you to exploit. It truly pains me that my academic achievements have never been appreciated in my homeland. Of course, I have no interest in being rejected by this city for a third time. Another chess piece. And where is your dendronosis? Don't be greedy, Harbinger of Snezhnaya. No, this is a different transaction. If you intend to turn off the Akasha anyway, then there's no further use for the Gnosis of Sumeru, is there? Besides, isn't it the Archon's duty to deliver what's desired of the Seeker? Oh, judging from your expression, you don't seem to find the idea very agreeable. Then let's think of it this way. Since you're the god of wisdom, how about I exchange some knowledge with you? People exchanging knowledge with the god of wisdom is the stuff of legends. Yet here you wish to exchange knowledge for the god of wisdom's property. Arrogant as that is, it has piqued my interest. Let me ask you. Have you, in all your mighty knowledge, ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake? Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. Once I finish telling you about this, it will be time for me to say goodbye. With negotiations, We've all gotten what we wanted. I'm very glad I got to meet you like this. Your arrogance may know no bounds, and convictions may mean nothing to you. But I'll still listen to what you have to say. Okay, wake him up. Are you awake? Kali says it's time for breakfast. Come on, get up! Good morning! How are you feeling today? Good to hear. It looks like we've recovered pretty well. Not even Tainari could stop us from going out now, right? Traveler, let's go. Good morning. Am 
looks like you're awake. Yep, yep. I prepared some breakfast today. Please have a taste. I hope you'll like it. <sighs> it's nice to have you here so we can eat something yummy. Well, now that I've recovered from Alizar, I'm feeling better than ever. I can even prepare four or five meals a day now. And Paima bets they're all delicious. Oh. oh, by the way, someone brought a letter for you after you went to sleep last night. Nope, Paima wanted to read the letter with you after you woke up. So Paima didn't open it. All right, let's read it now. Oh, it's from Milu. <clears throat> We're going to hold a feast at the Grand Bazaar and celebrate Sino's reinstatement as the General Mahamatra. As heroes of Sumeru, please be sure to attend. I'll wait for you. Hmm. The date of the banquet is written on the back. It's in two days. Oh, I've also heard that you've become heroes here as well. Oh, that's amazing. Sometimes I'm really envious of strong and confident people like you. Oh, <laughs> you're embarrassing me. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the Grand Bazaar to have a look. Oh, before you leave, be sure to inform Master Tainari. Tainari! Good morning. How do you feel today? We feel much better. How about you? I'm recovering well. Thanks for asking. But from the looks of it, you seem to be already busy with work again. It's fine. I'm not that busy, really. The Elazar patients have recovered, as well as Hapasia. For now, I only need to tend to my Forest Watcher duties. It seems once Erminsoul started getting better, everything else started to recover too. Yes, but there are still some residual effects. The withering is one example. Though it won't spread anymore, the existing zones won't just disappear. We forest rangers will still need to do the work. By the way, we have some good news. Sino got his position back. <laughs> this news is hardly new. He had already mentioned it to me before. Huh? You mean he was already here? Why did he come to say hi to us? He visited once, but he was afraid of disturbing you while you were resting. He just asked me a few questions and left. Then you probably already know all about the celebration feast. Celebration feast? No, I haven't heard anything about that. Huh? But didn't Milo say in her letter that they would celebrate Sino? He didn't tell you? Hmm. Perhaps, or alternatively, he doesn't know about it either. Uh, come to think of it, Sino doesn't seem like the type who'd enjoy a celebration feast. You and Kale are both Sino's close friends. Why don't you come to the feast with us? Kale has taken over some of my tasks these days. I don't think she'll have time for it. Not to mention me. You see, some VIPs have come to the forest recently. Huh? VIPs? Very important Paimons? Well, technically speaking, they are former VIPs. The sages involved in recent incidents have begun their training in the Avidya Forest, and the people they had previously imprisoned have all been released. Huh? Yes, he's a little weak, but he isn't injured and his condition is stable. Lesser Lord Kusanali in her boundless mercy has decided to spare Azar and the other wrongdoers. Supposedly they were ashamed of their shallow ideologies, and have decided to dedicate the rest of their lives to cultivating wisdom in the Avidya Forest. When they learned that Lesser Lord Kusanali had defeated the Balladeer and saved Ermansoul, they were shocked at first, but also became happy, feeling that the sacred light guiding them on the path of discovering wisdom had begun to shine once again. As a result, work has increased for the Forest Rangers. That sounds really exhausting. There's nothing we can do, really. But that's another topic. Back to the matter at hand. Are you two planning to head out? Ah, right! We're here to request permission to head out. Would that be okay? You've recovered well. You may go, but be careful.
Well, there won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Everything has already been prepared. Mr. Zubair, I finished telling things up here. Well, except for the guests. <sighs> Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? It's affecting our arrangements. Oh, it'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. The feast will be held sooner or later, right? Hey, Milu! Traveler, Paimon! We got your letter, so here we are! You're the best! The other guests haven't even replied yet. Huh? Are we the only ones that have arrived? Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your request like this. Nilu is Sumeru's number one celebrity, after all. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste. If you consider enjoying Nilu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste. Because Paimon thinks everybody will love her performance. That's right. We all think she's amazing, too. Nilu is an absolute favorite among those of us who frequent the Grand Bazaar. For Outlanders, you have a great eye. Master Zubair, let's have a vote for the most outstanding audience members next time. <laughs> I think these two may win. Nonsense! It is not for us to determine the value of an audience. But, indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. I heard there's a device in Fontaine called a camera that can record people's appearances as pictures. Such pictures would make superb gifts. Ooh, good idea. I wonder where we can find one. <sighs> I don't want you giving pictures of me to everyone. I'm satisfied just being able to perform here. There's always a lot going on at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah, and that's why I love it here. Traveler and Paimon, could you help confirm if the letters were actually delivered? If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please tell everyone that there will be a feast here. Yeah, we can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Hmm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos, and Alhatham was at the Academia. As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. My guess is that he's with Dia. As for Dunyarzad, I just hope she's feeling better. I sent her a letter... But I was afraid of disturbing her. If you have time, please ask about her for me. Okay, got it. Let's go, Traveler. Hmm. We haven't seen all Haytham anywhere. Uh, let's ask that person over there. Hey there, have you seen Alhatham around? Yes, it seems Scribe Alhatham has gone to the house of Dana. You should be able to find him there. But you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Oh? Who else was looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. You wouldn't believe how terrible their relationship is. And now you two are here. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. No way! We're strictly here on business. <laughs> ah, I see. Sorry, I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I am. Oh, Hatham should be around here somewhere, right? It looks like he might not have time for us. Just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the Academia. 
This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a physical book like this in Sumeru? It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came back today only to hear that the sages have disappeared. Oh, you sound surprised. I thought you would already know the inside story. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. So just tell me what you know already. Well, I almost became a sage. Huh? Oh, don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kave, light of the Kasharawar. Besides, as a master builder and craftsman, chances are you'll be appointed as a sage too. Hmm. Why do I feel like you don't really mean it? Huh. What makes you say that? Why would you question my heartfelt sincerity? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Yeah, well, I share a similar sentiment. And anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Ah, oh, you... See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. <laughs> it seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! Huh. What was your first clue? Well, then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. Ugh, and don't change the subject. You, a sage? What a joke. The academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they having a fight? <sighs> Forget what's going on with the academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Tell me, when are you going to build yourself a mansion? Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. So, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project, but considering Haravatat's utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? Well... While you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think I'd believe that? Look, all you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for funding from the Grand Sage. Hmm... Yours, though, on the other hand. You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Hey, Ahitham! Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? For Nilu. Have you received her letter? Letter? Nilu said she sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Zaino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. I only now have some free time to attend to personal matters. Have you always been so busy with your work? Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the whole academia was practically turned upside down. Kainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. Apparently they will spend the rest of their lives there. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. 
to imagine such things could take place in the academia. Hmm. I don't know where to begin. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them called that after all this time. But then again, the six great schools sounded pretty impressive, too. Yes, at least that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the Academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded. Only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the Academia. Now, the six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. They were imprisoned for opposing Azar and were only rescued after Azar's downfall. So who's managing things in the other four schools now? Do they need to find someone new? Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. Just say something about becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru. Yes, about that. <clears throat> you didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the academia. But I refused. I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. Oh, all right. <sighs> so are you busy these days trying to find others to take the job? That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the academia before the new sages take office. And the first thing I'll do is reject Kisharawar's application for funding. By the way, who was that other person just now? Is he your friend? Do we look like friends? Paimon doesn't know. That's why Paimon's asking. His name is Kave, my roommate. You could say he's the representative for Kisharawar scholars. Which is exactly why he always has so many problems. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Academia Scribe. Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast in two days. All right. I'll see you there. This is Port Ormos. Hmm. Now where could you... Is that Paimon I hear? Huh? Oh, it's been a while. How are you doing? Dinyarzad! It's been so long since we've seen you! I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. I don't know if you've heard, but Elazar has completely disappeared, and all the patients have recovered. You kidding? Knowing them and the connections they've got, I'm sure they've heard about it. Yeah! That's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? You've already informed my father of your resignation. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Old habits die hard. Resignation? You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homayanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a problem if you wish to continue to be our bodyguard. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now, my lady. When I took this job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you'd recovered. It's time for me to get back out there and chase that horizon. So what are you going to do now if you're not going to be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I want to take a risky job 
and put my body to the test again. Huh? But we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever! Are you getting bored already? I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. It made me realize that I'm still a mercenary through and through. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. We just came from talking with I'll hate them at the Academia. Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the Academia? What? I heard that Azar and his cronies fell from power, and I'll hate them told me that now was a good time to find a job in the Academia, but only if I wanted to. Whoa. Paimon can't see you being anything other than a mercenary. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. Ugh, ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know... If you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a Matra. Because you're super amazing! <laughs> the Matra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it'd be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I don't want to see you go, but I'll respect your decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy, too. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. Huh? But, wait a second! You make it sound like you're leaving now! Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. So, have you been in poor Ormos this entire time? We were wondering if you had received a letter from Nilu. Oh, uh, did Nilu write to us? She heard that you were seen in poor Ormos, so she sent the letter here. Huh. It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back, the receptionist is usually off napping on the job. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and check on that. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. Yes, she said they were preparing a victory feast in the Grand Bazaar, and will also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. She was hoping you could come. Great! I'll be sure to attend. Count me in, too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget! Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. 
But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in Aru Village. You can try your luck there. As for Raman, your guess is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. You can ask Sino when you meet him. Don't mention it. You'd better get going. All right, on to our next stop. It's been a while since we last visited Aru Village. Ah, there's Sino. Hmm. What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave, so now we're out and about again. It seems Kendarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm-hmm. And Tanari is recovering well, too. That's good to hear. Yeah, you're the one who brought us to him when we lost consciousness, right? Thanks for that. You're welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. But... why are you just standing here like a dead tree? I'm meeting some people. Oh! You mean Candace? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. Oh! By King Deshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> Don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Roman! And... huh? Sataria? Oh, you... know me? Oh, well, uh... you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry, these are our friends. No need to be so guarded. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after suddenly finding a new direction. Oh, tell us everything. Yeah, you go ahead. All right, well, I suppose I should start by saying I've decided to leave the academia. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar, but I have not completely given up on my relationship to knowledge either. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Uh, what do you mean? I plan to leave the academia and return to teach here in the desert. Wow, so you want to become a teacher? Sitaria will return to support education here and teach people from the desert. She can't teach everyone on her own, but there are many of us Eremites all over Sumeru. She came to discuss a collaboration with me and hoped that I could bring her ideas to the Eremites. Yes, it's my hope that the Eremites can help me select a group of smart people with the best aptitude for teaching. I'll teach them, and after they've finished learning from me, they can go educate more people. That is the true meaning of education and the spreading of knowledge. The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. Miss Ataria is more than welcome to come teach here. Her arrival is like a star shining in the desert night. The stars have always guided caravans, thieves, soldiers, and travelers who get lost in the night. They lead those in the dark out of trouble and back to safety. Oh, please. Where is all of this coming from? I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. You deserve these compliments. Mercenaries are accustomed to danger and don't fear death. Which is why we recognize extraordinary actions the common people would easily overlook. Sataria's idea will bring much good to many people. At first, I feared it was destined to fail. Everyone knows that the Academia doesn't allow scholars to teach in the desert without permission. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control, and very few desert dwellers are as lucky as me. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart, as if there were lightning bolts constantly bombarding my soul. 
Sataria, you tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become. Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. Miss. These words sparked something in me, and I knew that I had to bring something back to my people after going home. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find that he was no longer at the Academia. Lord Sino told me that Azar didn't belong there anymore. Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me, it may have been too light. Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert, and accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Eremites. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert. Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Lesser Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I've done some business for her, and part of it required the assistance of the Eremites. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia, and sent them to several groups in the desert, as instructed by Lesser Lord Kusanali. I believe the people will make good use of them. That's exactly what the people here need. Physical books and other related items. If it weren't for Sino and Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'm afraid we'd never be able to get our hands on them. Apart from this, the Academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing to teach in the desert. I'll let you and Satarian know as soon as I have any more news. We must be persistent about this, and maintain these resources to ensure long-term effectiveness. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. I think this may be the turning point for the desert. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. I hope people with wisdom like that priest will rise again among the desert dwellers. Then we'll once again see the wisdom and glory that once shook the world. Enough about us. Are you here to discuss some business, too? No, not at all. We're actually here on behalf of Nilu. Nilu wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us to come find everyone personally. A celebration feast will be held in two days at the Grand Bazaar. She hopes that all of you will be able to attend. At the feast, we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Uh, although, judging from your appearance, it seems you've already been reinstated. Paimon thought you would only start working for the Academia after the feast. Celebration? Feast? It's the first I've heard of it. Tainari was right. She really didn't know. <laughs> this feast is for you, Sino. Sounds to me like you'll have to be there. <laughs> it's rare to see that kind of expression from Lord Sino. You must not like feasts very much. No, not really. But I'll go. Well, I still have a lot to handle here. Besides, I need to look after Miss Sataria in the desert, so I'll have to pass. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Although, if you'd be so kind, please give a message to Miss Nilu for me. The message is... I'm sorry for how I treated you before, but now I understand the beauty of your dance. It's like a light shining in the sky. You and the art you symbolize are not only beautiful, but also lively and powerful. So much so that it was prohibited. Please keep dancing, and someday, I'll be able to appreciate your art in person. Okay, we've got all that down! Our job here is complete as well! Oh, Sino, remember, party's in two days! Make sure you're there! Got it. Everybody's already here! Looks like we're the last ones to arrive. You're here. Ah, oh, there you are. Well, look who finally decided to show up. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. But we're not late, are we? 
It's just that everyone else arrived ahead of time. I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Let's share some great food and drinks, and chat about all sorts of fun things. Everything looks quite good. Wow, Paimon can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! Delicious! Oh, this grilled meat tastes amazing! The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the residents of Sumeru City when they heard we were holding a feast. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru, and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. You've always been amazing, Dia. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. And I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. It's unbelievable! We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had a chance of succeeding? That's how I remember it, too. It's luck that brought us together, and it was luck that let us form a team. Then, it took even more luck for us to formulate a plan and implement it successfully. Moreover, judging from the results, everything worked out well. Yeah. Everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like a performance. We took the stage and put on our best show. Everyone played their part. And thanks to everyone's efforts, the performance was a great success. So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. Yes, even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, She's finally returned. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once used all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. The Academia basically abandoned her because of it. This should be something everybody should remember. Uh-huh. You look surprised. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? No, everything you said is correct. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already! <clears throat> Even if those two giants of the Academia are here, I still have to say it. Those sages really have some nerve. Five hundred years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. I respect our deity's decision and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> not at all. But every person handling the selection process has said that you are the most suitable candidate to lead the Academia right now. Why? Because he dethroned Azar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? This is a good thing. Yet you're making it sound like I overthrew Azar for my own personal gain. But seriously, though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. 
I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. I had no intention of letting their dreams disrupt my life. By that, you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe? Precisely. Uh, wait, is that all? So, that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. All right then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the General Mahamatra, right? That's right. Will you be happy with that life? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot of things that I must do. Even so, keep your spirits up and try to be happy, okay? And try to smile more every day. Just like I'm doing now. <sighs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings. But the atmosphere here is quite good. No. This gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. Unlike the farces at the Academia. That happiness is an emotion that'll be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven themselves insane by studying. Hmm. I seem to have taken both keys when I left the house. Hmm. <laughs> oh well. My lady, the grilled meat over there is delicious. Have you tried it? Yes, I also tried some fruit just now. Oh, they're very sweet. What an amazing place to relax. No wonder everybody likes to rest at the Grand Bazaar. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. Hello. Oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Oh, now I have the chance to meet all the heroes. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat and more eating and drinking. The feast is about having fun, not stuffy formalities. The atmosphere here is good, and everything is delicious. <laughs> yeah. I don't often come to such places, but it feels quite good. I have a lot to handle these days. Otherwise, I could show you around. <laughs> There's always next time. We're friends after all. <sighs> this feast is pretty good. I like it. Ah, there you are, Traveler. Well, how is it? Are you enjoying the feast today? If there's anything you're unhappy with, just let me know. I'll be sure to take note of it. <laughs> That's good. It's the first time I've ever invited so many exceptional people to one place. I was a little nervous myself. You see, every guest here is quite extraordinary. It's unbelievable that we've got everyone to gather here. Almost like a fairy tale. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'll be happy as long as you're enjoying yourselves. I'm honored to have her think of me this way. If I have a chance in the future, I would really like to invite her to one of my performances. I can't explain why, but I just feel elated right now. Thank you. Hey, what's wrong? Your head is starting to droop. Hey, you can't just fall asleep here. Paima will go find something delicious for you to eat. You wake up once you put something yummy in your tummy. Of course, just wait here for Paimon.
<laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. You may blame me for being a bit too self-indulgent. I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. The connection between us is amazing. It's like Flora and the fence it grows upon. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. Please say thank you to everyone for me. Uh, oh, is it not convenient for you to do that for me? But if I just show up all of a sudden, people will become all quiet and stiff, won't they? What if I end up scaring them and ruining this wonderful feast? That'd be the last thing I want. Hmm, let me think about it. Okay. Yes, I have. You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So... I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Please don't blame me. The floor also climbs up to the fence to get closer to the sky. Everyone! Are you awake now? Paimon was just about to bring you the food! It's me. Huh? That voice. Nehida? Uh, hold up. What's going on? I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser Lord Kusanali? Hello, Nilu. You know who I am? Yes. I already know every one of you. Nilu, I'll hate them. Sino, Dia, Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser... Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the Traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me, even if that meant placing your own safety in peril and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia, the Sages, the Doctor, the Balladier, and even the entirety of Sumeru. Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. I'm quite fond of this name. It not only explains your identities, but also bears witness to your relationship with me. Please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Sir Lord Kusanelli, you... You have done so much for Sumeru, and I, I... I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. You don't have to do this. Dinyarzad, the suffering you endured during your illness is also proof of you being with me and praying for me. Thank you. You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. 
You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so polite with us. I... I'm honored to have been able to take part in this plan. I hoped you liked the dance I dedicated to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. Did you rest well? After Nahida left, you ate a lot of food. You've become a glutton. Hmm. That just means you still have a lot to learn from Master Paimon, the Sage of Gluttony! <laughs> Alright, since you're awake now, should we go and have a chat with Nahida? She should be in the Academia right about now. If you have any questions, now's your chance to ask. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> what a fantastic night. I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. So are we, and that's why we're here to talk with you. Is there anything you want to know? After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha's centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And, as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumeru needs such leaders more than ever. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything. But no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. You mean, what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? You guessed correctly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. A useless point is leverage against the doctor. I told him that the heavenly principles may be awakened if I destroyed a gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the heavenly principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the gnosis? The exchange served as both punishment for the doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the god of wisdom. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. 
Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he is still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? You mean... About your sister. While you were resting at Gandarbaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your sister. Yeah! Isn't ermine soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on him or his sister. This is true in your case. Ermin soul indeed does not have any information on you. However... There must be something different about your sister. Because, as it turns out, the world has recorded information on her after all. What? There is only one possible explanation. She belongs to this world. But nothing about this makes any sense! Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm... According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, she began her journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as her journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermin Soul records on her suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did something happen to her? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating her fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how she somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler? You are Tevat's fourth descender. Huh? So the Vatui count three other descenders before the Traveler, and his sister isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new information. And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. Paimon, sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. All right, that's enough talk for today. 
If you ever miss me, just close your eyes, and maybe I'll appear in your dreams. Yeah. 